All right. Oh, this is going to be a moment in history. All right. First teleport. That's brand new, by the way. Here's the entrance we saw before. You could just glide from the top, but that's no fun. Oh, boy. Oh, <gasps> the first seal. Oh, they're blue again. That was going to be green. Another blue sealy. Looks so different already. Continue through the forest. Guide me in, Sealy. Oh, it's a bird. Is that a dodo? Michael killed the bird. Four leaf sigil. This crest, which looks like a four petal flower, will sometimes appear in Sumeru. Uh, when th when those who can manipulate the elements are facing one such crest, they can use and travel swiftly. Oh, is this the, the grappling hook? Oh, boy. Oh, dude, it's a Denjo crystal fly. First Denjo crystal fly. Hardcore. Oh, man. I think we're finally here. Should be to head to Sumeru City and find a way to meet with Lesser Lord Kusanali. Already? And speaking of Lesser Lord Kusanali, even though we haven't heard too much about her, she doesn't seem to be the same deity who abducted your brother. Oh, I'd, I'd hope not. But even so, people call Sumeru the Nation of Wisdom, you know. If we can get a chance to meet the God of Wisdom, maybe she can give us some useful information. Okay. Surely, we're going to the land of wisdom. Somebody will know where our brother is, right? Sounds like a plan. But, uh, Paimon doesn't know the way to Sumeru City. Maybe we can climb up to that spot with the Statue of the Seven on it. That'll give us a way better view of things. Even if we can't see exactly where the city is, at least we'll be able to check for some smaller settlements nearby. Paimon travel guide. <gasps> Who's that? Look, there's someone up ahead. It's like a. Dreaming. Now we can just ask for directions rather than wander around like lost adventurers. Looks like a relative of like Baija or something. Hey there. <laughs> We're not from around here and seem to have gotten a little lost. <laughs> We'd like to ask for some directions. Rip. Huh? Hello. Uh. What's going on here? There's no way she could have missed that. Oh, wait. Could she be ignoring us? How dare she? Calm down. It's probably nothing to work, get worked up about. Maybe she's the reason she ignored us. Hmm. Well, even so, she might be heading someplace where we could find other people to ask. Let's keep our distance and follow her. When we get the chance, we'll just ask someone else for directions. I feel like Simro might be the most shady region. Like, there's gonna be some weird stuff that happens here. Through Mist of Smoke and Forest Dark. Chapter 3! Come on, let's follow her. Just keep quiet. Make sure she doesn't notice us. Maybe she has the Akasha Terminal? Or, Akasha... Yeah, is it the terminal? Yeah, the terminal on her ear. She can't hear us. Oh, the music. The music. I have yet to hear this one, actually. First chest. Oh, no. Denjo sigil. We, we start again. Denjo sigil. Oh, we can open these now. Oh, that's cool. And it's, it's like a little bloom with the flower below it. It's like a grappling hook from uh, Batman. <laughs> this is it. Oh, we gotta we gotta switch to our traveler. That's for sure. There's still a long road. Ahead. I'm sorry for not leveling you. I'll do it eventually. I promise. The world opens itself before those with noble hearts, as usual. Ooh, wow. Yazadaya pool. 
on a village. Yeah. It definitely looks like it's a, just a part of Leo, I'm not gonna lie. There's this area to get, there's this. It looks small on the map, but I'm sure to scale it's not small at all. Oh! Why'd why they just be sat like that? Where'd the dialogue go? <laughs> what are you talking about? Is it around plant-like things going just like that? You mean cabbages? Oh, yeah. This is... This is real shady. Apparently Paimon saw that, but we didn't. Oh, no. We don't have the thing on now, do we? Very, very sus. This is just so sus. Sumeru is just sus already. Resonate with Dendro. Oh, it kind of looks kind of sad. The statue. Oh, that looks like an applied Dendro. Girl is oblivious. She's sitting over there. Wait, she couldn't possibly be living here, could she? Don't judge, Paimon. Maybe this is her home. Maybe this is all she has. Also, that. Uh, what should we do now? Do we try asking her for directions again? Maybe we shouldn't bother her. Show us give it a shot. What do we do here? I don't, I don't know if I well, if I'll talk to her and she just like. Becomes a monster or something. <laughs> All right then. It's not like we have anyone else we can ask. Even if she's not very friendly, we just need her to point us in the right direction. That's all. all right, let's give it a shot. Mmm. Oh. What a lovely smell. It's coming from that sensor over there. This oh, is sensor. Not your typical place to call home, but at least it smells nice. Mmm. Maybe living here wouldn't be too bad after all. Uh... Huh? What's the matter? You don't look too good. The smell, it's... something's not right. What? Is the smell making you feel sick? Strange. Paimon doesn't feel anything. It's making me judge Paimon even more so. Why? How are you not affected, but I am? I've got to get out of here? The hell? I'm gonna pass out. What is going on? Oh no. It's Scaramouche again. He's back. Daimiko? Dude, it's the tree! Oh no. This is the tree that's on fire, I think, right? Maybe not. No, this is the Ermin Soul tree that Tanari was talking about. Our HUD's gone. Repair. Dude, this is just too much to process. Looks like really good. Oh, shoot. Fresh cutscene. Hey, with Dendro. Let me up my volume. Just a little bit. Once again, the music. You can hear voices too. It's so bright. The trailer. Yeah. Maybe that was Ruka Devada. I didn't sound like Lucy Nolly in the trailer. Are you sure it's not serious? The traveler's been out for a long time now. 
now. I wonder, because we just got passed out, so it's either a hallucination or a dream. And then once we have the thing on our ear, we can't dream anymore, so... Maybe we don't want it on our ear? Yes, you can relax. Believe me, Master is extremely knowledgeable. Howie. If he says that she's going to be alright, then there's absolutely nothing to worry about. Oh, this is the world's first. Oh, are you awake now? Kali, Kali's actually, she's actually the real main character, honestly. Oh, thank goodness. Traveler, you're finally awake! The real, the true main character. Where am I? Well, we're at... Uh... Good question. Where are we? Hyman was in such a panic when you passed out that she even forgot to ask what place this is. Imagine Traveler just dies right there. That's, that's the end of the game. This is Gandarvaville. It was originally built by Scarlet and Sumeru as a place to rest in the rainforest. Now it's mainly used by the forest rangers as a base of operations. I'm sorry, I just, I hear nothing but Shangling right now. My name is Kale. I'm a trainee forest ranger. My master and I found you passed out during our patrol, so we brought you here. Huh. Anari and her? Yeah. Oh, no, no things are necessary. I didn't do anything, really. By the way... How are you feeling now? Any discomfort? I seem fine, except this taste in my mouth is bitter. Oh, <laughs> that's Master's herbal medicine you're tasting. You drugged me? I gave you some while you were unconscious. Oh, God. Uh, before I forget, Master mentioned you should take more medicine once you wake up. Been drugged. Oh, and there's more too. There's like plants on the wall. Oh, come on, Kali. Oh. Kali, what's the matter? Were you trying <laughs> to retrieve the medicine? As I've already told you, you must be careful with these. All right. I'll get it for you once I'm finished here. Dude, shout out to... Wasn't it Elliot Gindy? The great, great voice for this character. She looks super sad. Like, wow. Uh, <sighs> he looks now, miserable. The guide to Avidya Forest's edible fungi is clearly posted on our bulletin board. But if Farbode forgets which mushrooms to avoid one more time, I'll have no choice but to leave the guide somewhere a little more visible. Like right smack on his forehead so others can remind him to be careful. Alright, don't mess around. Right? This is the second time he's come down with food poisoning this month. I'll be sure to give him a good talking to. Farbod, is it? Yes, please do. If, on the off chance, Farbod simply enjoys Farbode. having little imaginary fairies dance before his eyes, then we'll just let him be. But the next time he requires any of our medicine, be sure to charge him accordingly. Dude, I don't even feel like I'm playing Genshin right now. Like, that's how, like, different this is. Ainari. Here we are. So, how are you doing? Feeling better? Oh, this is my master, Forest Watcher Tainari. He is chief officer over all the rangers here in Gondarvaville. Gondarvaville. I already informed Paimon about the reason you fell unconscious earlier. But now that you're awake, let me explain it for you as well. Oh, that's gonna be interesting. It is common practice for Sumeru scholars of certain darshans to dedicate themselves to training and meditation in isolated areas, particularly the nearby forests. While meditating, they use a certain incense known as spirit borneol to help calm their minds as they enter a state of deep rumination. That was meant to calm us, not knock us out. In hopes of asking directions, you two followed a scholar named Hapasia into her cave. Hapasia. The incense you smelled inside was the spirit borneol I just mentioned. Oh. That enough. incense typically has no effect on most people. But for a very select few, it can have profound effects on one's cognition. As you experienced firsthand. Does that make sense? Yeah, so apparently kind of like real life, where some people kind of have different uh, responses to certain things. So I guess the Traveler just had a different response to it. That all makes sense? Yeah, it makes sense to me. Very good. Now, 
Answer me this. Did you feel anything after passing out? Say, any out-of-body experiences? Or did you see anything while unconscious? Yes. Oh, actually, it's okay. Hmm. Kali, let the others know to stop bringing their patrol logs here for now. Oh, shoot. Oh, no. <laughs> huh? Wh why? He was like, oh, that's what you saw? All right. That's the case. Because these two will be staying here for the next few days. They can have my room and I'll bunk with Amir. Now get a move on and be sure to do as I've said. Well, now we have a new home. By force. Yes, Master Tainari. And she's off. Sure, let me fill you in. I originally planned to send you on your way once you finished your medicine. However, it appears now that you should stay a while longer in Gundarvaville for further observation while you recuperate. Mm. Further observation? He wants, he wants to know. He knows about that tree. We need to get to Sumeru City. Oh yeah, I forgot we're actually trying to <laughs> get through here. No need to be hasty. As long as you have the capacity to judge between right and wrong, I promise that you'll understand the gravity of the situation once I explain everything to you. Based on what you saw after smelling the incense and losing consciousness, we can conclude that you experienced a powerful hallucination, which suggests your mental state is not in the best of shape. <laughs> Damn, all right, well. What we saw was pretty important. If you're skeptical, have a whiff of this. Oh, it's his dendro bomb. Whoa. Oh, are you okay? You're experiencing a similar sensation as when you passed out, aren't you? Yeah, just put that in my face again, Tainari. So even though your condition is stable as of now, if I were to haphazardly let you leave, it's highly likely that you'd suddenly pass out again somewhere else. Oh, no. The rainforest is home to many fierce animals and hazardous areas. If something were to happen to you again, I'm afraid you might not be so lucky. For now, I suggest you continue taking your medicine each day and avoid wandering off on your own. At least until you stop having adverse reactions to this kind of smell, okay? Well, as long, well I guess since we're going to be in Sumeru, we can't really avoid that, that smell. Good. Now continue resting while I fire up another bowl of medicine for you. Oh, how much medicine are we taking? <sighs> Seriously? We just arrived in Sumeru and we're already having problems left and right! <laughs> Paimon knows we're set on meeting Lesser Lord Kusanali as soon as possible, but you really don't look too good. It'd probably be best to let you recover first. Can we play as Paimon and just go there on our own? Uh, Maybe everybody's just high on the wacky weed, you know, or whatever that that sensor had and that's its smell. Oh, I already forgot what it was called, darn it. It's like Boral, he said, something Boral. A little weird. What's weird? You mean how you're feeling now? My body does feel a little weird, but I, I mean, but what I mean is I don't think I actually saw hallucinations. You mean the vision of tree roots and red skies you saw? But if those were hallucinations, what could they be? Real. When I saw the vision, I felt as if I was standing deep underground, but I, uh, but the sky was red, or but the red sky could have been Conria. No, I don't think so. But well, considering how unique you are, Paimon trusts your judgment here. But why didn't you say anything about it to Tainari? If you misjudge your condition, then there's a chance you could get worse, right? I don't think that's the case. Probably was just telling us the truth. Yeah. Huh? You mean that Tainari already knows that what you saw weren't hallucinations? But if that's the case, why would he try to hide that from us? That's, that's what I was thinking. I think Tainari absolutely knows what that was. The bottom of this? Oh, Paimon gets it now. That explains why you were so quiet earlier. Well, that settles it then. We'll stay here to rest up and figure out what's going on with your hallucinations. But it seems like asking Tainari might not be an option.
option anymore. Uh, what do you think we should do? What's up having a chat with Kali? Good idea. Kali's pretty friendly. We can ask her tomorrow about what she knows regarding the Dendro Archon and customs in Sumeru. All right. Well, two days later, or one day later, I guess. Interrogate hey, Kali. Come on, it's time to go find Kali. Find Kali. It's actually really funny to like be playing as a traveler because now it makes sense like visually. Dude, this place looks nice. Little oh, this is yeah, this is Tainari's little spot. Wow. It's like plants plastered on his wall. That correspond with the butterflies. Cam Cameron, Cameron. Oh shoot! What is that? Is that a dude? Oh lord. Was it for the forest evaluating effect on disease? Someone with Elazar would have been not allowed to be a forest ranger? Elazar? Who are you? What are you doing here? Why are you asking about that? <laughs> Just passing by. Rest here if you're tired, if you want to be educated, or if you don't want to be educated by the forest watchers, take a look at the stuff on those. Curious to see what this is. It'll be oh, adventurous skills. Dead on my feet. I... Using the path through the chasm in the sumer was a bad idea. That was like the, that's the best way to get there. What do you mean? Nobody would get me to get through the block way, so I had to go all the way around. Oh, dang! Never mind. That's the best I come up with. Sumeru Rose. Wait, what? This is called the region and then a rose afterwards. Nice. Oh, no, there was spice. Yeah, spice is new. Go find Kali. Kali is right here. All right. Next, let's see. Right hand. Hmm. Yes. Not bad. Not bad. But please remember that you still need to be careful. Understand? <sighs> yes, I will. By the way, Master, I still haven't received the patrol route for today. Look, Kale, today's patrol will be a long one, so you won't be coming along this time. <gasps> Besides, there's a chance we may encounter... Well, you understand. Counter what there, sir? But I have a vision too! <sighs> Am I useless to everyone now? Oh. Don't talk like that, Kale. This is not something you need to be worrying about right now. Kale. Ah! There you are. Feeling any better? Run into what? Something that I can help with? Yeah! Since we'll be staying here for now, we thought we might as well try lending a hand around here. <laughs> Seems you're not the type to sit back and take it easy for a while, huh? In that case, perhaps Kale could take you two for a patrol south of Gundarvaville for the day. Hmm. I'm probably gonna go with him somewhere, but... And if you're feeling up to it, you can be responsible for cleaning the Statue of the Seven. <laughs> cleaning duty. Tainari, we're ready to head out. Here. Roger, I'll be right there. All right, we'll be heading into the forest now. I'll leave any further details to Kale. His name is Amir, not Roger. Yes, you can count on me. Bad joke. So, Kale, what exactly are we going to be doing today? Tainari mentioned cleaning the statue just now. But, uh, that doesn't really sound like the job for a ranger. Well, a forest ranger's responsibilities can be pretty diverse. What'd you say at first? They handle a variety of tasks, like checking the condition of outlying roads, maintaining forest facilities, ensuring fire prevention standards are met, and providing assistance to travelers and locals. Looks like a pretty chill job. As for Master? more dangerous areas of the rainforest. Today we can perform routine checks on the pathway lamps as we make our way to the Statue of the Seven. Well, we can talk to her on the Ion, way. Traveler, this way. You 
check the lamps. Of checking the lamps to me. In the meantime, you two can keep an eye out for anything unusual. Huh. Oh, I wish Kalia was actually like physically here. Like Yenfei in the uh, Chasm Quest. Simuru Rose. Oh, here's your money. Your Mora. Fifteen hundred. Alright, so where are we on the map now? Okay, we're still in the very beginning. Oh, it's the same thing from, uh... The same thing from, uh, Inazuma. Dendro Grana. Oh, we're taking the animal. Nothing wrong with these two lamps. Let's move to the next ones. Oh, never mind. Never not. Just doing maintenance. Oh, this lamp seems to be getting a little wobbly. Let me make a note of it. <laughs> hmm, no problems with this lamp. Good. Kali is so like a uh, just, just such a kind spirit. The statue of the seven is up on top of that large rock formation. You must have seen it when you came down this road before. Oh, I've seen it. It's pretty high up there, isn't it? Don't worry. If you're afraid you can't make it up there, I'm sure Master wouldn't mind if you don't clean the statue. Shouldn't be a problem. I need to worry, I'm a terrific climber. Oh, I guess I'll leave it up to you then. There's not much footing once you reach the statue, so be careful up there. Paimon will fly up with you and help you with those hard to reach areas. <laughs> I'll fly up with you. Um, by the way, Kale, do you know anything about the Dendro Archon? You know, what's she like? Uh, that depends. Are you referring to Greater Lord Rukudavata or Lesser Lord Kusanali? Hmm. See, we didn't have this issue before. Huh? Greater Lord Ruka Devata? Oh, is that the name of the former Dendro Archon? Uh huh. Greater Lord Ruka Devata was Sumeru's first Dendro Archon. She created the rainforest as well as the Wall of Samiel around the desert. Her works provided a means of peaceful living for everyone. I hope we actually get to see Ruka Devata, like, I see how she used to look, you know? Oh, she made the, the desert, too. Oh, the wall around it. The wall of Samuel around the desert. To the people of Sumeru, she's not only a symbol of wisdom, but also of power and kindness. Unfortunately, she disappeared in a great calamity that occurred a few hundred years ago. Hmm. That's in the trailer as well. Yeah, Ryan uh, Makoto. Or, Ryan. <laughs> Ryan Makoto. That was, a. Uh... Similar, but I feel like that was kind of different, though. It's, it's a, little, a bit different scenario. Nah, I don't know. I guess so, yeah. Does it coincide with Kanyo? Did you know about? Oh, this is just to ourselves. Never mind. According to what Master has told me, the Sage's leader found the newly born Dendro Archon and whisked her back to Sumeru. What does that mean they found her? Just found her somewhere? She was just hanging out? Or are found as in, like, made point. To celebrate the reinstatement of their lost deity, the sages dubbed her Lesser Lord Kusanali and let her reside in the sanctuary of Sarasana. That is so shady. Lesser Lord, that just means you're literally just a lesser version of our previous one. Uh-huh. Then what happened? Well, and then... Uh... Oh, uh, no. I'm not too sure what happened, to be honest. Huh? You're not too <laughs> sure, but aren't you from Sumeru? No, he's from mods that... No, not really, but kind of. Yeah, I'm from Sumeru. Uh, maybe it's difficult to discuss this topic with strangers. If that's the case, then don't worry, we understand. Well, dang, Paimon. No, no, it's not that. I'm not trying to hide something from you. Besides, I don't consider you two strangers. A anyway... Y you two know Amber, right? Oh, here we go. Wait, Amber? You mean? No, she mean she means those big orange things in Leeway. Yeah, Amber. Out of Rider Knights of Onius, the avid lad from Mondstadt. Yes, that's her. I once lived in Mondstadt for a while, and she helped me a lot during that time. A callback. You could even say that she helped me become a new person. No, she really did. She really did. There's no one like Amber. She lives life to the fullest while always adhering to her strong sense of justice. She's ready to answer the call for action at any moment. 
Raven is also very understanding of others. She's like the spark that lights the fire in everyone's heart around her. A great explanation. If you ask me, she's a prime example of a true outrider. She's the first person anyone coming to Mondstadt will meet. You can't help but be enthralled yep. by her charm and enthusiasm, <laughs> causing you to fall in love with the lands of Mondstadt and... Go on. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Never seen this side of you, Kali. Uh, I kind of thought the work of Outriders was a little different from what you just described, but one thing's for sure, you really <laughs> like Amber. That's so sweet, though. Especially after, like, reading... All, all the way through it. Uh, <laughs> sorry. I was rambling on just now. It must have sounded kind of weird. It kind of like really was like the main character, Loki, of the of the manga. And also, this happened like way before we we were a part of it, like the traveler. <laughs> it's all right, Kale. Knowing that you're a friend of Amber somehow makes Paimon suddenly feel a lot closer to you. So, how do you know that we've met Amber? Well, after I returned to Sumeru, Amber and I have stayed in touch by writing each other letters. Oh, nice. Yeah, uh, Kylie kind of just like left randomly and didn't let Amber know. She left her a letter when she left, but she didn't like say goodbye. She just like left and then was like, hey, by the way, here's a note. I left. In one letter, she mentioned that Mondstadt was attacked by a fearsome dragon, but the city was saved by a mysterious blonde traveler and their floating companion. I wonder who that could be. I knew you two were the ones she mentioned in the letter the moment I saw you. But, uh, considering everything you've been through that day, I thought it'd be inappropriate to bring it up. I hope she mentions, like, her past, too. Ah, so that's how you knew. Yep, so please know that you two have my complete trust. Really, I wish I could tell you more about the Dendro Archon, but I have been away from Samaru for some time, and I haven't read any books. Sorry. Where have you been? That's all right. You've already helped us a lot. We had never even heard of Greater Lord Ruka Devata or the Sanctuary of Surathana until you mentioned them. Oh, for sure and Oz, yeah. <laughs> That's like... A, a character with a with blonde hair and a floating companion. For sure and Oz, actually. Oh, I'm happy that was helpful. There is one thing I want to ask, though. Why do you two want to know about the Dendro Archon? Explain the purpose of a journey to Kali. Hmm. So that's why you're here. Thank you for telling me your story. Don't mention it. We are friends after all, right? A month's right, we're, we're friends. <laughs> all right, we have a statue to clean. You both have my thanks. While you two are up there cleaning, I'll go ahead and inspect the forest canopy. Let's meet back here shortly. Off the clean with Animo. Oh, shoot. That was frightening. Oh, oh I gotta remember to take pictures. That's... Huh. Now that Paimon looks at it, the deity that's carved on the statue is kind of small. Oh, yeah. I was thinking the legs were like that long, but that's just a claw. She's supposed to be Greater Lord Ruka Devata or Lesser Lord Kusanali? I don't know. A good question. I mean, if it's super small, it's definitely Kusanali, but. The name does seem to fit the statue somehow. Hmm. Well, anyway, we'll have to figure that out later. Let's get started on cleaning the statue. Paimon will fly up and take care of the top, and you clean everything below. Yeah, the grapple creature is really nice, yeah. The grapple. That's one clean statue. Let's head down and meet up with Kale. Kale, we're back! What's that? She's our original icon? Oh, so it's not? Okay. Huh. Maybe she was kind of small, too. Welcome back! You must be tired after all that climbing. Let's take a little break. I brought some fruit and water for us. Yay! What kind of goodies did you bring? <clears throat> Some restraint, please. Hey, don't be a party pooper. It's not like Kale is a stranger or anything. Besides, the best way to compliment a chef is to show passion for their food. Xiangling taught Paimon that. 
Shang Ling mentioned. I prepared a nice portable dish that forest rangers like to eat called Pita Pockets. I hope you'll like them. Pita Pockets. Uh, oh, you dropped the food. Oh, no, you dropped it on the ground. Not to worry. I wrapped a few layers of oiled paper around each pita. They should be fine. Okay. Oh, I nearly had a heart attack there. <laughs> a heart attack. Just to lose some food. You enjoy the pitas together Those with Kali. Those are amazing! You're quite the cook, Kale. Thank goodness you wrapped them in paper. Paimon wouldn't have been able to sleep at night knowing something so tasty had been wasted. Jesus. <laughs> you really know how to compliment the chef, Paimon. Since you liked it so much, I'll be sure to give you a copy of the recipe sometime. Hey. I'll even include all my personal cooking pointers, so you'll be making your own pita pockets in no time. Yay! Thanks, Kale! It's hard nice. to believe someone as diligent as you could have clumsy moments, too. Oh, <laughs> uh, I guess it happens from time to time. So, uh, Kale, it don't happened. you think that Tainari's a little too strict with you? He won't let you touch anything without his permission. Paima knocks stuff over all the time flying around the Traveler, but she's never said anything. Everyone has their clumsy moments. Uh, just say a couple things. No, no, you've got the wrong idea about Master. Uh, <laughs> sure, he may seem a bit harsh at first, but with some time, you'll see that he's actually very kind-hearted. I've heard the veteran rangers say that Master is from some ancient and mysterious race that is known for their cunning wit and reclusive nature. Veteran rangers say that Master is from an ancient and mysterious race. Oh. Huh. You've heard of the Academia, right? Well, there's a group called... Uh... Um... Um... Uh... Uh... Um... Boo... Something? <laughs> Wait, what? So apparently, yeah, we don't know what Kali... Or, sorry. We don't know who, uh... We don't know what Tainari is. Like, what his species is. I thought he was, like, one of those, like, fox things. But... Apparently, we don't know. It's an ancient and, like, mysterious... Race, so... I know what he is. Well, anyway, because Master does a lot of research on plants, sages from the academia have written him many times, inviting him to take up an official position there. And she talking about a group of the academia? A A M U something? But Master declines their offers every time, saying Sumeru City is too noisy. It'd be bad for my ears. Yeah, it's big old ears. That doesn't like something Tainari would say, speaking of his ears, I'd like to pet them. <laughs> I know, right? They've always wanted to pet them, too. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> anyway, Master could have easily left the rainforest to take up a position at the academia. But he chose to stay here instead as a forest watcher, helping the locals every day and passing on his knowledge to trainees. Yep, that's like his character teaser. Where he was like writing the note to the academia. In fact, Master's the one who taught me how to make pita pockets. He was like, no. Really? Paimon would have never guessed that. Oh, speaking of Tainari, he was the one who took care of you after finding you passed out yesterday. He even carried you all the way here. Oh, dang. Paimon's still kind of upset, though. He kept scolding Paimon the entire way here. <laughs> Baby? What'd you do? Oh, no. I'm sorry. Master might have been overreacting a little, but uh, it's mostly because Paimon wouldn't stop yelling. Why, oh why? Is she going to die? It probably <laughs> started to get under Master's skin after a while. Hey! Don't laugh! Paimon was genuinely concerned about you! <laughs> she gonna die? <laughs> The wholesome moment. Ugh, that's it! Paimon won't forget this! It's time for some Paimonial Wrath! And Paimonial Wrath. They're gonna transform into the unknown god again. No! Don't touch me! Oh god! What's happening? What's the matter, Kelly? Oh. I mean what? Kale, are you okay? What's the matter? Noah, I'm <laughs> I'm fine. I'm sorry. I'm 
Why no. Why does you both reacting like that? This is a callback. Oh, well, it's getting late now. Uh, let's hurry back to Gundarverville. I think Master and the others should be back by now, too. Devin compulsions. Yeah, I love Kali. What was up with Kali just now? And why is she in such a hurry all of a sudden? Look, she's practically running back. Paimon can't even see her now. I can. I mean, she's definitely walking, Paimon. Yeah. Records from Vietnam. Having compulsions. One of some legends, there used to be no desert in Sumeru, and it was a battle between Scarlet King and the Greater Lord, created, or in the Greater Lord, that created the desert. The Scarlet King? Hmm. Maybe we've heard anything about that. Maybe that's what the Amorites want back, of their Scarlet King. Big dream. Maybe, maybe somebody... Maybe, the uh... Forest climate is far more pleasant than that of the desert. Maybe Luka Nevada will come back eventually. Possibly. Oh, I clap, I clap for you when you do that. That's funny. Yeah. Maybe they will come back. Dead on my feet. Huh. Traveler, you've returned. Aspirin? Yep, we're back. Uh, have you seen Kale by any chance? Oh, Kale? Yes. I saw her go into her room just a moment ago. Oh, okay. Guess we'll just have to wait and talk to her tomorrow then. <laughs> wait until eight the following day. I saw a dental. Oh, there it is. That's the first one. Ooh. Ah, it's you two. I was just about to go look for you. It's been a long time. <laughs> huh? Tainari, what are you doing here? Where's Kale? I came to check on Kale's condition. To put it simply, she's not well. Oh no. You mean she's sick? How could she be? Oh, wait a minute. Could it be because of what Paimon did yesterday? What did you do, Paimon? What did you do? No, no need to worry. Something as small as you could never harm her. Damn. Uh, this sickness Rip. is something that Kale has been dealing with for some time. Kale has been more excited than usual since you two arrived. A little too much so, to be honest. She hasn't remembered to take care of herself. <sighs> I suppose it's understandable, though. She hasn't been around anyone she considered a friend for some time now. It must have been refreshing for her to have you two here. True. So, Tainari... What's really wrong with Kale? Um, let's take this conversation elsewhere. Kale just fell asleep after taking her medicine. She needs some peace and quiet. So caring, Tainari. So caring. Wait, I'm gonna go closer to... Oh, I see. Oh, now? Let's continue our conversation <laughs> here, shall we? Hey. To be honest, I hadn't realized that you're that honorary knight from Mondstadt until Kale told me just now. I've also heard all about your deeds in Liyue and Inazuma. So, just to clarify, what I'm about to tell you about Kale is not because of who you are or your past feats. Instead, I am going to tell you because, well, because Kale asked me to. Oh. And honestly speaking, I was against Kale revealing her past to you, but she insisted, saying you two treated her with sincerity and as a friend. So now she wishes to reciprocate the gesture. Look how we're just casually talking in the thunderstorm. So Tainari, what exactly is wrong with Kale? You said this is something she's been dealing with for some time. Just how serious is it? It's the seal. It's the after effects. Right. Ever since she was a child, she's been afflicted with a disease called Elazar. Elazar. Elazar? Yes. It's a disease unique to the lands of Sumeru. It is characterized by dark and hardened scales that form on the body. Ugh. At first, the afflicted may only feel mild numbness on the affected area of the skin. 
However, as the disease progresses, one may begin feeling fatigued and even experience peripheral paresthesia. In its final stages, the disease strips a person of the ability to control their own body, Whoa. and they effectively become completely immobile. It is pretty serious, if you ask me. That sounds terrifying. They lose control over their whole body? Wait, hold on. So when Kale seemed to be acting a little clumsy earlier, it was because... Oh, no, that is horrible, man. Dang. Correct. That would be the effects of Elazar, which is precisely why I do not want her carrying or holding anything, lest she ends up hurting herself. Wow, that's awful, dude. Lost the internet and shut that. Oh, really? When you say that, it's, it's, it's how stormy in the game. <laughs> is there any chance? Is there any? I can't read. Was there any cure for Elazar? With appropriate treatment. The disease can be effectively controlled before it progresses to a more serious stage. However, there is unfortunately still no true cure for Elazar. Damn. Nevertheless, Kale's mother still hoped that there was something out there. She handed Kale over to an organization known as the Fatui after one of their members lied and said they had a cure. Oh, so now she okay, now he's explaining the manga. What? Ah, it appears you are already familiar with them. That'll save me some explanation. Anyway, the person who eventually rescued Kale and brought her to me for care said that she had been given to a harbinger known as the Doctor. I have no idea how this Doctor managed to do it, but her case of Elazar was completely stable for all the years that Kale was with them. It's all right. However, Kale's days with the Fatui were anything but pleasant. Kale is a resilient individual and always tries to appear cheerful, but her experience with the Fatui has left deep scars. Even now, she can still feel deathly afraid of someone touching her. Yeah, no doubt. Oh, Paimon had no idea Kale's been through so much suffering. Oh, by the way, Paimon, Kale wanted me to tell you that she's sorry for scaring you yesterday. She also wanted both of you to know that she's sorry for hiding her illness. She doesn't need to apologize. None of this is her fault at all. Well said. I hope you'll get a chance to tell her that in person the next time you see her. Kale once thought that it would be impossible for her to have any real friendships. I trust that you two will never let my trainee experience such emotional pain again. Don't worry, Tainari. We'll take good care of her. I was supposed to finish it now. Well, it's not too serious at this point. She overexerted herself the last couple of days, which is what led to her breakdown this time. As long as she has taken her medicine and gets plenty of rest, she should get better. So she can't do too much, like, activity? Though, I must admit that Kale's condition was much more stable when she first arrived here in Gondarvaville. She was interested in the work of the forest rangers the moment she saw us. I could see that she was serious about learning. So I felt compelled to ask her to join us. Oh, no. Her stamina has gotten much worse recently. Though a moderate amount of physical exercise is always necessary, I'm afraid the long-distance patrols are a little too much for her now. <sighs> All right. Now that I've told you about Kale's past, I think I'll head into the rainforest to find some ingredients needed for her medicine. I'll see you two later. Can we come along? Yeah. We'd like to do something to help Kale, too. All right, but I must warn you two. The rainforest is a dangerous place, especially for someone who's still recovering like the Traveler. You must follow closely and listen to every instruction. Yes, sir. No problem. Let's go then. We'll be looking for a plant known as Lunar Lotus. It's often used to help those afflicted with Elazar recover their energy. Or Nilo Pala. Nilo Tpala. Lunar Lotus can be found all over the rainforest, but it often grows right here around Gondarvaville. Hey, Tainari! Amir and... I uh, forget how the name. Oh, Tainari! Someone's calling your name! They're dressed like a forest ranger. Ah, yes, that's Amir and the others. But didn't they just set off not too long ago? What are they doing back so early? 
Let's go find out what's going on. We just discovered a withering zone. Oh no. The withering is back? But the patrol route you were on should have been already clear just a week ago. It reappeared so quickly. Can you tell me the exact location? It's up ahead, deep in the river valley. It's appeared in a spot that blocks nearly the entire narrow part of the valley area. So we decided to come find you as quickly as possible. It could become a matter of life and death. That's serious, huh? You ready then? Let's go. Go. This is no joke, man. First, Thanks. we must locate any branches sustaining the withering zone. Is these? We gotta find the. Oh, that's. Oh, God. Ow. Where's okay? I gotta go back again. Oh no, we need to get these too. Oh. Did it hit? Okay, hit him with all three. I see. This one actually worked without a bow. Now that all the branches have been cleared, we'll need to take care of the tumor. Shoot. Fate is upon you. Oh, okay. We did it! Everything's returning to normal now! Oh, God. I wonder why I have to watch the forest hard. Thanks to you two, we were able to quickly restore this area back to normal. You make it sound like we did well, but why does Paimon have the feeling you're worried about something? It's that obvious, huh? All right, it's like this. Recently, the rate at which the withering zone appears has been increasing. Even though we were able to quickly clear that withering zone, it won't be long before another one appears. Mm. If that simply meant more work for me, then that wouldn't be an issue. But it's far more severe than that. The withering is leaving lasting effects on the rainforest itself. For instance, even though we cleared out the withering zone, many of the plants that were affected will not recover. This presents Damn. a crisis for the ecosystem itself. Many plants in the rainforest are already in decline, directly impacting the wildlife that depends on those plants. And most disturbingly, as the appearances of withering zones have started to increase, Kale's case of Elazar has also become more serious. Everything's going downhill here. That'd be because of... Ore. I mean, maybe not, maybe not like the, the nature of failing, but the withering? I don't know. Maybe it was like better back then when Ruka Devada was here. I'm still not sure of the exact reason. However, I've received word from acquaintances at the academia that similar cases are being reported for patients with other conditions. Is there no way to permanently get rid of the withering? No, none that we know of. The withering has been recorded in Sumeru for millennia. It's said that it originates from the depths of the world. By the way, have you heard of Soul before? Oh, that's a trailer again. Then voice lines just like come back to you. Uh, yeah, so Erwin Soul is like those trees, not the whole tree, but like the roots connect to the ley line. Erwin Soul is a tree located deep beneath the surface. Although it isn't like any tree we know in a biological sense, you can basically think of it as a large tree that grows downwards rather than upwards. Oh, so that's what we saw in the beginning. I'm sure you've heard of ley lines, right? They're like the roots of Erwin Soul spreading and extending from a massive cavern deep underground all the way up to the surface. Spreading and extending a massive cavern? Sounds a lot like what I saw when I was unconscious. Ley lines continually absorb the memories of this world, which are then funneled into Ermin's soul, allowing it to collect knowledge and wisdom from ancient times to present day. 
Wow. Yeah, that makes sense because we can go back and we saw D look in the Hidden Strife event. So, get to see like the old memories and whatnot. That's actually pretty cool, yeah. Like how that all ties back in with like older events. The Dendro Archon is known as the God of Wisdom because her consciousness is directly connected to it. It is also said that the Dendro Archon's power is a manifestation of Ermin's soul. And as for the withering, its emergence is related to a disease that's affecting it. So Ermin's soul is sick. That's right. My ancestors learned of this from Greater Lord Ruka Devata's familiars a long time ago. But even those mysterious creatures did not know of a cure for Ermin's soul. Hmm. I'm afraid we rangers will be battling the withering zones here for a long time until a cure is found. Try that again. All right, that's enough on this topic for the time being. Now that we've taken care of things here, it's time for us to head back to Gondarvaville. Oh, Tainari, you all made it back. How did it go? The withering zone you reported has been taken care of. No need to worry. Huh. Wait, is that? Oh no, Hapasia! What happened to Hapasia? Huh? What's wrong, Tainari? Man, I can just tell everything. This dusk bird is Hapasia's designated courier for urgent news. You do remember her, don't you? She's the scholar you and Paimon were following when you first arrived in Sumeru. Oh, it's like her bird. Oh, her? How could we forget? Uh, so did something happen? Let me see what's written in the letter first. Hmm. So what's it say? And what's with that <laughs> weird expression on your face? Uh, just let Paimon read it. Huh? Uh, all Paimon sees are three squiggly lines. <sighs> yes, allow me to explain. After we brought you from Hapasia's cave to Gondarvaville, Hapasia resumed her meditation. She must have just finished. It's been nearly three days since she's had anything to eat, and it appears she's forgotten to prepare some rations. This letter is her asking us for help. We need to go. Forgot to eat? What? You mean she's been sitting there for three days? Hey, wait, how did you know all that from just a few lines on the paper? Well, obviously, because this has happened before. Last time, she drew five lines. And by the time we found her... <clears throat> well, I prefer not to remember that. What happened with the five lines? Needless to say, hapasia has been through worse, but we should still get to her as quickly as possible. I've got some emergency rations set aside for times like these. Paimon, Traveler, could you two bring these to her? Wait. You want us to bring her the rations? Uh, but will the Traveler be okay if her cave is still filled with that funny incense? True. Let's find out. Here, Traveler, take a smell and see. Let's find out. So, how do you feel? Oh, well, nothing unusual this time. Huh? Really? You're not feeling even a little drowsy? Like, wait, how'd you know that she'd be okay this time, Tainari? He didn't. Back when we were clearing the withering zone, I observed that she could adeptly manipulate the dendro element. I knew then that she would be fine. And if I may ask, when I was telling you two about Ermin Soul's ley lines, was what I described similar at all to what you saw while you were unconscious? Yes. What I saw weren't hallucinations, really? That's correct. Those weren't hallucinations at all. <laughs> Though I don't intend to apologize for deceiving you. Because what you saw is of significant importance. Not just for the nation of Sumeru, but the entire world of Tevat. My forefathers were shown much favor by greater Lord Ruka Devata. We took an oath to protect this nation together with her. Now that that duty has fallen to me, it was part of my responsibilities to ascertain whether you could be entrusted with the fate of Sumeru. Now, after seeing you in action with my own eyes, you have earned my confidence, and I no longer feel the need to hide any secrets from you. Hmm, alright. However, shouldn't we be going to Apasia right now? <laughs> Is he in trouble? You passed out. Your consciousness had connected directly with Ermansoul. What you witnessed were actually real memories contained within Ermansoul itself. 
I could try to tell you more, but it would be better if you went to ask Hypatia instead. Her focus on meditation and use of spirit Borneo are aimed at establishing a connection with Ermansoul, just as you did. Oh, so that's the purpose of it? Uh, that sounds nice and all, but will she really help us? Seriously, she completely ignored us the last time we tried talking to her. That was because when you ran into her, she was in a special phase of her training. During that time, she must avoid communicating with others. Please, wait here for a moment. Hmm. I guess she needs to, like you said. Okay. Makes sense. Uh, what? That was a long... Wait. Here, take these. It's a meal I packed for Hypatia, as well as some other ingredients. I'm sure it'll come in handy. That was the most realistic part ever. Hold on, I'll be right back. We're just standing there waiting. Comes back. Also, here's a letter that I would like you to give to her. Just show it to her and she'll answer any questions you may have. Thank you, sir. No, I should be the one thanking you. You've both been a great help these last few days. Hello? Hypatia? Hey, there's nobody here. Hmm. Maybe she went out to look for some food. Let's try looking around the area. Faint sound? Was that sound? That's like something from outside the cave. Don't go in there with no without Paimon. <gasps> oh shoot. Oh, what is that? Got blurred? His light got blurred? What's going on? Oh, are we dreaming again? There you are! Hypatia, are you alright? The music reminds me of like... I don't even know how to explain it. It just reminds me of like a meme. Uh, uh, so hungry. <coughs> Eat water. Oh god, she looks famished. Somehow has more energy than I expected. There's no way we can get her to eat in her current condition. Uh, let's try finding some water first. Okay, huh? Wait, why does it look super foggy outside all of a sudden? Uh, anyway, let's go look around. Getting sus again. Getting sus. I did a miss. Huh? How'd things out here end up looking like this? I'm telling you, bro, Sumeru is just a big mirage like the GAA Islands. What happened? And where are we? That might be a big assumption, but relax, Paimon. There must be a lot of explanation for all this. Really? Maybe this is why we, we can't dream when we have the thing on our ear. And via the trailer, I think we will have it on us. Look at the effects of the grass. Actually touching grass right now. Oh, I'm in a domain? Oh, shoot. Interesting. You know, looking at looking above, this kind of reminded me of the chasm, like this area that was like underground. 
somewhere over here. I wanted to actually change or something. Probably not. This boosts her damage? Oh, yeah, it sure does. Bouncy mushrooms. Then you want to use electric to. Oh, no, you can't. Never mind. Can I not? There we go. Oh, we're about to go that way instead. What are you hiding over here, though? Music is so soothing. Oh, wait, what the what? The stuff over here? Oh, whoops. I got Denjo Sammy Shiro, or Sama Shiro. What the heck? Who is killing me so fast? Uh, oh, I'm a little fly. Denjo fly. Dude, this is sick. I'm on all the way. They have really outdone themselves. What the hell? Shoot. I feel like I kind of skipped a lot of stuff, though. From, uh, Primeval, is that? Primeval, Rosen, and Domain. So sometimes find in Primeval, Rosen, and uh, Sealed Paths that correspond to them with Domain Zimru. Collect three. Oh, okay. Need three to make it bad. I feel like this is not supposed to work that way. Whoops. Oh. Whoops. I immediately was like, yeah, I don't know if this is the way I'm supposed to be going. These things really save you don't have any stamina. One more. Three in total. Investigate the quaint room. What in the what? What is going on? Huh? What happened just now? Why did everything around us suddenly change? I right, like Inazuma domain. It's like the Kazuha GAA domain. Weird. And again. You're looking for a path to the upper level of Tree Hollow? This is why people don't dream. <laughs> again. Is that Unizuma domain? What into that? This place is getting weirder by the minute. <gasps> hey, what's the matter? You don't look so good. Uh oh, fainting again. Oh, that's just simple. Best to get the corridor on the other side. Uh, I wonder if there's like an explanation about it. 
<laughs> what? Well, well, well. Looks like we meet again, traveler. <laughs> Why? Oh. You again? Oh, Lord. Here we go. Learning. Ow. Oh, fuck, where the bloom's at. So let's see what Dento does to his Hydro Shield. Nothing? Scripted. Traveler, though you may have managed to avert countless crises before, your good fortune was bound to end sooner or later. It's time you realize <laughs> how weak and powerless you really are. My journey will not end here. I still must find my brother. Your brother. <laughs> Traveler, are you really so ignorant? Or are you just living in complete denial? His Highness has long since forsaken you. Your meager existence in his eyes is that of an annoying bug, only to be stepped upon. The bonds of love and family which drive you to find your sibling are utterly gone. Your journey is meaningless. Alright, well. That's it. Had to, had to go to run. Go ahead and uh, just end it here. But don't you fret now. Today will be your last. Now die! Dead. That scene. Oh. Yeah, I really, uh, she's still dead. Gotta get her up, man. Wait, when did the dream start? on that for a second there uh are you okay that's really not like you anyways we can talk about this later we better make sure she's all right first whoa wait a sec look at all this fruit lying around her we can put that to good use that's some big fruits, man. <laughs> oh, what the heck? Those fruits look huge. Given the same conscience, pass you some water and fruit juice. Uh, who is there? Tainari, is that you? Uh, yep. In the flesh. Oh, wow, that's good. Uh huh? It's okay. You can relax, Hapatia. Tainari sent us here to bring you some food and water. He oh, whoops. Tainari. 
symbol on I see. You know so, your friends of Tainari. I apologize for all the trouble I've caused you. I'm grateful that you came so quickly to save me. You even brought all this fruit. Okay, maybe it wasn't so big. Uh, well, actually, we didn't bring the fruit. It was already here when we arrived. We were kind of wondering about that, actually. When we found you here, there was all this fruit lying around and even some juice dripping from your lips. <laughs> uh, how did you end up like this anyway? Oh, really? Hmm, I seem to understand now. All the fruit was likely from my, uh, neighbor. Must have come by and saw me like this. That was real shady to me once Your again. Neighbor? You mean there's someone else living nearby? The little brown creature? Oh, so you're able to see them too? Oh. What the hell? I don't know what's going on. Wait, hold on a second, traveler. You say that before we arrived, you saw some mysterious creature and suddenly had a strange dream? Isn't that a little too crazy to believe? No, I actually do believe what the traveler is saying. I myself had a similar experience once before and ended up scaring my timid little neighbor here. You needn't worry. They mean you no harm. They only dragged you into the dream because they hoped to buy themselves a little time in order to scurry away. Oh, I see. So, Hypatia, just what kind of creature is your neighbor exactly? I'm not sure what it's called, to be honest. But I do know that they have some sort of deeper connection with the Dendro Archon. I know this because the first time I saw them was also the exact day my consciousness was able to form a connection with Ermin's soul. Even after I opened my eyes and stopped meditating, my heart was still pounding, and my mind was racing with all the knowledge that I had touched. And at that very moment, I suddenly noticed a small figure at the opening of the cave. Like little trolls. Like smiley faces and... Just sucking you into a dream. In my curiosity, I began to walk over to the creature. They must have already been used to me living in the cave, because they didn't seem to mind me approaching them. They just kept doing whatever they were up to. Dancing. It wasn't until I crouched down next to them that they suddenly realized that I could see them. Oh! And then? And then, I had a dream. By the time I came to, they were nowhere to be seen. I was convinced they'd never show up again. But, sure enough, I saw them nearby a few days later, and they weren't alone. I feel like they aren't as afraid of me as the first time I approached them, but I never would have expected them to save me. There was a bunch of them when we got to Statue of the Seven in the beginning. Remind me of, uh, Brokos and, and Zelda. Oh, I was gonna know what you're talking about, yeah. The fascinating creatures, it's like a great neighbor. Yes, no doubt about that. By the way, Tainari mentioned in his letter that you had questions for me regarding Ermansoul. <laughs> Sorry about that. Sounds like just drinking juice still isn't quite enough for my stomach. Well, if somebody hadn't dropped the food earlier... Hey, I was in a dream, anyway, okay? looks like we'll need to prepare something ourselves. Besides... Paimon's getting hungry too. Let's eat first and talk about Ermansoul later. All right, we're up, traveler. Today's menu will feature sweet madame and a radish veggie soup. You'll love them, a the classic. They're our specialties after all. Mm, sounds good. I've never tried any dishes from other nations before. I certainly look forward to it. It's been so long since I've had a decent meal too. To be honest, the last time had to be when Tainari came to visit. <laughs> what was that? We got some dishes over the fire. All done! Let's use the empty box that Tainari gave us since we already watched it. Oh, it smells amazing! And the box is a nice touch too! Let's go serve this up 
and start eating with Papasia. Papasia. Yep. yep. Are you already finished cooking? Mmm, smells delectable. I'm truly thankful whenever I can enjoy a proper meal like this. Uh, cooking really isn't my forte. Even though everything you mentioned was in Tainari's letter, it's still hard to believe you were able to connect with Ermin's soul immediately after smelling spirit borneo for the first time. It took me nearly three years before I could do so. Three years? And everyone at the academia even lauded me as a genius. You should know that some researchers spent their entire lives without ever successfully connecting with Ermin's soul as you have. So why does this incense allow people to connect to Ermin's soul? The ingredients used to make spirit borneo primarily consist of plants created by Greater Lord Ruka Devata. Oh, that explains special it. special ingredients are conducive to heightening our senses to the Dendro Archon's power. Since the root of the Dendro Archon's power lies within Ermensoul, we can occasionally tap into her powers to peer into the depths of the Earth. Yeah, I understand. Think about it, Tainari. Refusing to join is tantamount to burying your head in the sand. Sages. I understand that you're a forest watcher and that it's your duty to combat the effects of withering zones. But isn't it evident that such work is not a lasting solution to the problem? As Sage Kajé clearly stated, your presence and guidance in Sumeru City is pivotal in finding a cure for Ermansul. How could you possibly refuse? Keep your emotions in check, Gulam. Let's at least listen to Tainari's reason for declining. We're here to invite him to the Academia, not to cause a scene. Sage Kajé, I am truly honored that you came here in person, but I'm afraid I must still decline your invitation. I am merely a forest watcher. How could the great minds of the Haravatat have any need of someone like me? Haravatat. <laughs> well, it turns out that your refusal letter had some implications on your master's reputation. He is a renowned sage of Immorta, after all. So now I've come here in his stead. I see. Huh. And I figured that given his temper, he would come here and berate me personally. Sign up. Your master is an integral part of this effort, and now he requires your assistance. And what exactly does my master need of me, Sage Kajer? You'll know once you've arrived in Sumero City, that is. Maybe not. And how long will I be required to stay? Uh, there's no definite answer as of now. Do you mean to tell me that despite coming all the way here to Gondarbaville, you still can't answer the questions I laid out in the letter to my master? If that's the case, then I'm afraid I cannot give you a definite answer either. Tainari, Oof. but you... No buts. Uh, so be it. Come, Gulam, we're leaving. Damn. Don't look at me. Keep moving. Uh, Tainari, what was that all about? It's nothing. Some people from the academia wanted me to go to Sumeru City to assist them with a project. But I had to refuse on account of all my responsibilities here. But all that can wait. How did things go with Hapasia? It was quite the eventful trip. But the main thing is that she's safe and sound. She answered a bunch of questions for us, too. Very good. Now that the Traveler has made a full recovery, there shouldn't be any reason for you to tarry here longer. I assume you will be heading to Sumeru City, correct? That's right! We want to meet Lesser Lord Kusanali and ask her for advice. Um, do you have any idea on how we can find her? Sorry, I'm afraid I don't have any advice for you there. Wow. Sorry, good well, luck. Do you at least know anyone we can try asking in Sumeru City? Hmm, let me think. My trips to Sumeru City have been fairly short, 
And most of my acquaintances are researchers. How about this? I'll write you a letter of introduction that you can give to a researcher I know. He's from the Amorta Darshan and is adept at gathering information. Asking him might prove worthwhile. So, looks like we may not see a lot of Tainari anymore after we leave here, because they'll be focused on forest watching, so. Once we leave uh, Gandharaville, then that's pretty much it for Tainari for a bit. Also, when you enter Sumeru City, you'll probably end up receiving something like this item here. I'm not sure if it will ever come in handy for you, but maybe you can give it a try. Oh? What is it? It's called an Akasha Terminal. No! It's a tool produced by the Academia that Don't. utilizes the legacy <laughs> of Greater Lord Ruka Devata. Some say that this very item is the basis of Sumeru's reputation as the City of Wisdom. That was also part of the trailer when he said that. And you know, so he says Academia with like such disgust. Like produced by the Academia. Huh. Yeah, I don't give us that thing, man. Needless to say, this device and its usage fall under the Academia's expertise. So I'll leave it to them to show you how to use it. Great! Next up, Sumeru City! They uh, just had one of those uh, sitting around? But wait, before that... Say goodbye to Kali? That's right! Tainari, we have something important to say to Kali before we leave. Is she doing better now? Yes, she's doing much better. After being confined to her bed all this time, I thought a little walk would do her some good. Last I saw her, she was taking the path towards the North Crossing. <laughs> she knew you two would be leaving soon, so she must have wanted to see you off. Thanks, Tainari. All right, let's go. Farewell, and good luck to you both. Bye, Tainari. About Kali. Don't you worry about Kali. I'll look after her. I'll find a way to understand the relationship between the withering and her disease. Kale is waiting at the northmost crossing of Gundar. Academia's invitation. It seems there's a major project underway at the Academia, and my master has also joined the effort. But I can't afford to leave Gundarvaville now. Things are not going well here in the rainforest, and Kale needs someone to watch over her. Besides, I was never one for all the pomp and circumstance of life at the Academia. Given that my master hasn't come to give me an earful personally, tells this me that must not be is not as sorely needed as they make it out to be. In fact, the letter he sent to me was uncharacteristically polite. Kale is waiting at the northmost crossing Uncharacteristically. Of That's a you long word. You should be word. able to find her there. Farewell, traveler. Goodbye, Tainari. Is her name Um? Or maybe Oom. Back. Ah, I've been waiting for you two. I, uh... Well, uh... <sighs> Never mind. I guess I should just wish you two a safe and successful journey. No, come with us. Thanks for waiting here just to see us off, Kale. We're headed to Sumeru City. Please take care of yourself, Kale. We'll be back to see you soon. Don't worry about me. I can take care of myself. My condition won't be getting in the way of my duties. I want to be a forest ranger after all. It's up to me and the others to protect the rainforest here. And, uh, well, uh, I'm sorry. I should have told you both about my condition when we first met. I just wanted you two to treat me as a normal friend, not some girl that needs your sympathy. Oh. But I guess now I understand that the most important thing is for friends to be genuine with one another. There's no need to apologize, Kale. We should be thanking you for trusting us enough to be your friends and sharing your past with us. We're probably still gonna worry about your condition, but that's because we're friends and we care about you. Thank you. That means a lot. Uh, before you leave, I have something for you. Oh? Hey, what? What is it? It's my recipe for pita pockets. Hey, oh yeah, she did say that. Coffee, remember? Yeah. My <laughs> Yay! Thanks, Kale. Now we can eat those scrumptious little pitas whenever and wherever we like. I hope that whenever you eat them, you'll both remember your time here in Gandarverville. Damn. Well, that's pretty much it for this these characters. Well then, I, Trainee Forest Ranger Kale, bid you both farewell. Please visit 
Gundarverville again. The Rangers will always be ready to assist you here. Rip. Bye, Kale. How are you feeling now? I'm much better now. I'll be back on patrol again starting tomorrow. Even though I'm not quite ready to help Master clear the withering zones yet, there are still plenty of other tasks for me to handle. Oh, and Traveler, if you ever see Amber again during your travels, please don't mention my illness to her, okay? You just said tell people the honest, the honest truth. Amber knows about my case of Elazar and what's happened in my past. Oh, she knows. Okay. But I haven't told her about my condition getting worse. I guess I just don't oh, want no. her to worry about me. If the need arises, I'll tell her about it myself. All right, we understand, Kale. <laughs> kind of hard to believe the Master Tainari can cook, isn't it? His culinary techniques uh, are very polished. I guess. But his taste is a little... Uh... Unusual? It's not really his fault, though. He just has a sensitive tongue and nose, so he prefers much lighter flavors. And ears. The last time I went a little too heavy on the spices for my pita pockets, Master started having a sneezing fit. <laughs> of course, I never heard the end of it after that. <laughs> I hope you have a safe trip to Sumeru City and get to All meet right. the Dendro Archon there. See you later. Be sure to come back often. Even though Master didn't admit it, I'm sure he wants to see you again. All right. Goodbye, Tainari and Kale. I will never see you guys again. It's been fun. And Amir as well. Goodbye. And sag. Wolf. <laughs> Thank you for taking care of the people here. Good. What's the dog gonna Isn't give me? Single one missing. The mirror rose. Nice. All right. I will be back. Well, that was good. That was a great little first section there. Learned a lot about Tainari. Learned about the withering forest. We learned about Kali's condition. Ruka Devada, the dreams. Uh, Hypatia. Or Hypatia. Hey, it's a uh, Nima. Oh my gosh. Ramana, Ramana Nana. Flying around myself? Oh, shoot. Who's Ranana, Rana Nana? Come on around, friends. Oh, all those little guys. Manu? There's too many Ananas in Sumeru. <laughs> Just make believe characters. Rip. Aranara. No, I mean, I don't know if they're real or not, but they most certainly were there. We saw them. Brave Aranara. To be small, but they're brave. Oh, no. All right. Here we are, Sumeru City. We got a farmer. I pray all the all my goods come directly from the palace of Alcazar's array. Alcazar's array. I there we go. Take orders from my employer. As you should. Don't take my goods for simple stuff. They're all renowned from the place of. I already forgot. Alcazar's array. I've actually never been I've like I went over there but I didn't like go over there. That good, huh? Don't believe me, you should take out the quality of my products before you make any judgment. I only hmm. take orders from my employer. Nice. These guys always like give you something. Oh, thanks. Some Sumeru dishes. Delicious buttered chicken. Ooh. It's attack food. Oh wow. Nice. Some more kids playing. Oh, Mozag. Oh, shoot. They have their cash on term terminals on. Oh, no. I can't dream. Everybody have it? Oh, yeah, they do. The kids have it? I don't think so. I don't think they had it either. Lock of what? Some rare roses. 
Hey, let's get into the city. See this? <laughs> they all have the Bluetooth headset. After so long. Oh, did you see that? When those people entered the city, something on their heads lit up. One moment, please, you two. It appears this is your first time visiting Sumeru City. Anna. Oh, yeah, that's right. But how did you know that? Because there's currently no information on either of you in the Akasha. Oh, shoot. <laughs> But no need to worry, that won't prevent you from entering the city. In fact, the Academia conveniently provides each traveler to Sumeru City with a device. Didn't Tainari give us one? Also, the music is going insane right now. Perhaps you two have heard of the Akasha before. It's our beloved greater lord Rukadavata's lasting legacy. A treasure trove of collected knowledge. Yep. After centuries of tireless research on the Akasha, the Academia created one of its most ingenious inventions, the Akasha Terminal. Yeah, you sure did, unfortunately. As long as you are within Sumeru's borders, you may use an Akasha Terminal to connect directly to the Akasha and access any knowledge you need. I should mention that due to technical limitations, the operation of Akasha terminals will be much smoother and more effective in large cities such as Sumeru City and Port Hormos. So it's specific to the city, okay. Oh, so this is the thing that Tainari was telling us about. It sounds pretty amazing. Oh, okay, yeah. You two are quite fortunate. Until recently, it was standard practice to only issue Akasha terminals to outlanders who spent an extended amount of time in Sumeru. However, this policy was recently changed, and now all travelers are issued one upon arrival. Hmm. Here are your Akasha terminals. Please handle them with care. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, boy. It kind of looks like a leash. <laughs> to activate it, Simply hold it in your hand and say the following phrase to yourself. <clears throat> May the mighty God bless us with their voice of wisdom. Interesting. Oh, since this little doodad lets you access knowledge, maybe we can use it to find a way to meet Lesser Lord Kusanali. Let's give it a try. All right, Lamine. I want to hear you speak. Say it. <laughs> Not you, Paimon. By the mighty god bless. Okay, yeah, I'm not gonna say that thing. Could I at least have that? Oh shoot, we're blind too. <gasps> Just now, something clicked, and Paimon suddenly knew how to use this thing. It seems all we need to do is concentrate on what we want to know, and bam, you get it. Oh, that'll come in real handy. This is like PMI. Exactly. That is the power of the Akasha. Much information. And with that, let me officially welcome you both to Sumeru City. May the wisdom of the Dendro Archon always be your guide. Okay, now that we're in, we can check the Akasha about Lesser Lord Kusanali. Let Paimon try. Hmm. <gasps> 500 years ago, the sages found a newly born deity from within some scorched ruins. The deity now resides in the sanctuary of Suristana. Hmm, seems pretty similar to what Kali was telling us. So, Nahida is in there? Yeah, so Kusanai should be in there, I think, right? Okay, next, let's concentrate on asking how to meet her. Hmm. Uh, huh? Uh, Hyman doesn't sense anything. Um, hmm. The Akasha didn't respond to Paimon's question. Well, that's that's maybe a bit too much to ask for. That may happen to me. Oh, come on! Ugh. Focusing on this question feels like when you have something you're trying to remember and it's on the tip of your tongue, but you just can't think <coughs> of it. Ugh. Paimon's brain is exhausted. I'll try asking the Akasha something. Uh, or maybe I'll in indirectly find more information about Kusano. Oh, smart idea. Why doesn't the Akasha answer my question? 
Listen to our finale, or think Greater Lord Ruka Devada. Hmm. I kind of want to ask the Greater Lord Ruka Devada. Many bright dots in my light appeared in my head. I probably need to calm my mind and focus more to understand what they mean. Feelings of affection, intimacy, nostalgia, sadness, and anxiety also come to mind. These seem to be what the people of Sumeru feel about their departed Archon. Intimacy, nostalgia, sadness, affection, anxiety. Dang, that's a hard mixture of <laughs> a lot. Paimon's getting all teary-eyed all of a sudden. It feels like the people of Sumeru really miss their Archon. You miss your Archon from 500 years ago? You gotta let it go, man. Think, why doesn't the Akaza answer my question? Oh, there's other options, okay. Same knowledge began to trickle into my mind for a moment, but there wasn't really anything I could do, or I already knew already. I can't just turn around. <laughs> Like, why doesn't Yakasha? Yeah. A vague thought something comes to mind, the Akash doesn't then intentionally, or it doesn't unconditionally respond to every query. Also, even the same query is rejected by multiple people, the Akash still imparts knowledge based on each person's identity, age, experiences, and other demographics. Huh. Huh. Could it be because we're outlanders and we've only just arrived in Sumeru? You know, maybe we're not qualified to receive an answer to this sort of question or something. Possibly. <sighs> well, seems no matter which way we try, we can't find anything that'll lead us to Lesser Lord Kusanali. Hmm. Guess our only choice now is to try meeting with the researcher that Tainari recommended. He's from Sumeru and even has a position in the academia. Maybe he'll be able to access more info from the Akasha. Good thought. Tainari wrote an address on the letter's envelope. Oh, it's not far from the city's gate. Let's head over and have a look. Hopefully he's at home. Baruch. Watch out for pickpockets. Oh, no, that's the first thing I hear when I come to Samuru City. Watch out for pickpockets. Assassin's Creed 1 all over again. Pickpockets wouldn't dare come around often. Inside jobs. Watch your wallet. Oh, God. He's my twin brother, a petty thief who talks nonsense all the time. Oh, no. That would suck to have a twin brother who's a, who's a, uh, a thief and you're not. They all look the same. Don't trust anyone. Oh, Lord. Thanks for the books, though. Look at the new NPCs. Akram. You must know yourself as well as your enemy to win every battle. Wouldn't you agree? What do you mean? I'm a member of the Corps of 30. Naturally, we're responsible for keeping the peace in Sumeru City. Meanwhile, the most common crime we see is more crowded parts of the city. A lot of, a lot of thievery going on. I can't, apparently. I can't talk today. For real? My own brother say something like that about me. Help you. I'm Mr. Ezam, secretary. That's what we're taking minutes for him. Hmm. Hello, are you Rohawi? It's a. Uh, I'm trying to think of what NPC looks like. Kind of looks a little bit like a uh, Oli. Yes, that's me. Can I help you? Great. You see, Tainari sent us here, and what? Tainari? I... Please, th there's no need to say anything, really. Sure, I admit that the article I published last month wasn't my best work, and maybe the data didn't produce the most convincing results, but... Uh... Not nah, over here for. Here! This is a letter from Tainari! Oh, let me see... Ah! Ooh, what a relief. You two nearly scared the life out of me. <laughs> so, you two just have some questions for me? Seems even Tainari acknowledges my innate ability for procuring information. <laughs> so, what is it you two would like to know? Nice stash. We want to meet with Lesser Lord Kusanali. Do you know a way we can do that? 
You mean you want to meet the Dendro Archon herself? Ah, this isn't exactly my area of expertise, but let me see what I can find in the Akasha. Hmm. Sorry, the Akasha didn't respond to my query. Why can't we just say, like, where is she? I mean, I guess we know where she is, but... I mean, just, you know, common sense. Hello, how are you? What? You too? But what about your abilities for getting information and all that? Uh, Paimon was sure you'd be able to access more info than we did. Oh, the piano in the background. All I know is that ever since Lesser Lord Kusanali returned to Sumeru, she's never left the Sanctuary of Suristana or made a public appearance. Oh my goodness, it's riding all over again. She's stuck in the Sanctuary of the Planet Euthymia again. Eh, a little less egregious though. And this one's just kind of like there compared to Raiden, where she's like in her own space. But. Huh. Didn't expect her to be such a mysterious figure. She might be like just scared or something. I don't know. The Dendro Archon is somewhat of a recluse. Perhaps she just doesn't want to entertain visitors, which would explain the lack of information in the Akasha. But, but then what can we do? <laughs> no need to worry just yet. I'm only hypothesizing here. You could certainly try asking around and see if anyone else has ideas. If you two ever want information about things like who's been promoted within the Academia or relations between the Six Great Sages, come find me. Ooh, the Six Great Sages. Hey, come on. This is a survival skill at the Academia. So what do we do now? Even if we want to talk to someone, we don't know anybody here. No, there's still one other person we know. Huh? Like who? Oh, shoot. Add Astra Applesauce. Oh, you're right. Catherine! The Adventurers Guild has its own intel network. Let's hurry and find her. This is the fourth Catherine. All right, and we're headed down to Catherine. Oh, shoot. Sorry, I missed clear produce. Oh, this looks nice. The Bia. Temptation triggers love, but too much love triggers disaster. <laughs> Luckily, they don't care much for you. Oh, wow. Marut and Marut? Shadows of nimble demons for free and unfettered creatures. Oh, the two cats? Yeah. Cats are curious creatures. They have many strengths, but curiosity is not one of them. Curiosity and uh, penchant stand fish on the shore and traps on the or trap birds on the ground. Interesting. Little harbor. Anabe. Oh, I'm a public servant from the Inazuma Shogunate. I was sent to serve for my uh, meritorious service. Oh, shoot. They said I was sent here from my contributions and upholding administrative er, administrative re regulations. My current assignment does not seem to be going too well. Minutes of mushroom trade, different types of mushrooms. The shogun has been delaying the release of this document I need. When can I officially begin importing mushrooms? Is it just me? Huh. Oh, hello. Far is enough. Hi there, can I help with something? Let's be dizzy. <laughs> Take me to the hospital? Oh, God. I run an armed commercial shipping company. I used to serve as a lieutenant captain. Oh, I used to serve as a lieutenant for Captain Beto. And I made it quite a bit of money doing so. Oh, shoot. He's a boat captain. I haven't ventured back out to sea since I started my own commercial shipping company. But I'm struggling to get used to being back on land because we, I spent long at sea. I have to walk back and forth avoid getting dizzy. Ew, these I NPCs. Seem to stand straight on dry ground. These NPCs are uh that's some pretty good history. For uh like the older regions. Sedge. Sedgy. That guy is a, a trade association for the Inazuma Shogun, and she used to work with Beidos on a crux ship. 
This guy's also on a business with a Unizuma Shogun official. Oh, it's with, with the other guy we just talked to. Unizuma, we believe that her accents for generations, so it's difficult to understand. Yeah, changing archons. True. True, 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 true. Tough employed fishmonger. Eating fresh fish. Keep my family afloat. Man, this NBC's got some hustles, man. See what you got you got some fish oh wow she has fish <laughs> crab <laughs> sea grass and shit nice actually kind of need the fish but that's okay oh lord the warkanath rima okay so this is good to know so the corpse of 30 is like a, a mercenary group You must be a predator like a hawk. I never remember about these things. Huh. Number 80. Go, boys. Welcome. I hope you'll have a wonderful day. Yep, that's what you just said. <laughs> you have a shop. I, I'm from Liyue and currently working here as a part time while I prepare for an exam. Since I was a kid, I loved watching ships come in and out of Liyue and Harbor and seeing how they can dock and load on car their cargo. Nice. These NPCs really have like some full on lives got going on. I'll definitely pass the academia test. What's going on in here? Into a tavern? I'm getting so distracted. Oh, oh god, it's Jafar. <laughs> oh shoot. Dude, this looks so good. The food. Go upstairs. Oh dude, this was where uh the way in uh not Zhao, I think it was a different guy. But this is where they had the live stream. Like, they, they recreated this right here. Or something like that, right? That's cool. You can sit where Dai Wei was sitting. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. That's it. It's his name, but that's what they kind of recreated. Is nobody up here? Rip. Yeah, they did a really good job with the look of this. The Blam Bad. Why is it so, so foggy? Did a menu? Oh, we got all new recipes. Glorious beans. Hmm. Dark shroom, crabs, fish, same old thing. This is new spice. Uh, shawarma wrap. Delicious lamb bad fish roll. And all the new recipes. A lot of more, but I'll purchase the new recipes. Nice. <laughs> they said I was a sailor today in the honor of the tavern. Wow. He built this tavern overnight? These NPCs, man, what in the world? I passed through the vast understones, more raffle than a Ryan Shogun, and I pierced <laughs> through Glacier's Steeler than the Tsaritsa's heart. Holy. I mean, says Naya. Guy is a Giga Chad. To fall. Can we just show life is around? About Port Ormos, the place at the edge of the desert. There she is, boys. Ad Astra Abyssosk. Hello, Traveler. She's back! The robot. Catherine, we need your help with something. Understood. The Adventurers Guild is always ready to serve you. With what do you require assistance? We want to meet with Lesser Lord Kusanali. Do you know a way we can do that? You two wish to meet with Sumeru's Archon. Understood. Please wait. Waiting. 
Oh no, wait, wait, wait. That's not the I apologize. Oh, never mind. But I am unable to call up any relevant information in the Akasha. I'm also unable to locate any pertinent information in my personal memory. Really? Please do not worry. I may know of someone who can help you two. In Sumeru, the Adventurous Guild does not serve as the vanguard of information. Rather, there are numerous active mercenary groups collectively known as the Aramites. Aramites. They take on various contracts and work all across Sumeru, so they naturally accrue intelligence. An Aramite brigade called the Corps of Thirty is in charge of Sumeru City's defenses. Not only are they the oldest brigade, but they are responsible for managing and coordinating the affairs of all other mercenary brigades. Hmm. Corps of Thirty? What a weird name. Corps of Thirty. Supposedly, they are named as such because their ranks numbered 30 at their inception. <laughs> oh no. Asfond, an advisor with the Corps of Thirty maintains good relations with the Adventurers Guild. Though he's already retired, he and his words carry great weight within mercenary circles. Got rank 30. If you'd like to get in contact with him, you can find him at the Corps of Thirty's headquarters, the Citadel of Regzar. The Citadel of Regzar. Thanks a bunch, You're Catherine. Welcome. I wish you two the best of luck. We look forward to your exploits in Sumeru. Exploits. All right, off to the Citadel of Rizzo we go. Oh shoot! I know that's a door you could open. Wow, man, this is so cool. We are rich businessman. Let's go, man. These NPCs are full of life, man. Everybody says full of life. Kumari. Oh, there's Swoof. There's a dog. Okay. I'm gonna be. I become a dancer like. Uh, I'll have to become a dancer as good as Nilo when I grow up. Oh, I'm sure you will. Love Nilo, she's gorgeous. Uh, her voice is so melodious and her dance is stunning. Every time I see Nilo, I would smile. Let me touch the jewelry on her head. The Cerberus Festival is my favorite holiday. I can get candies and a nice set of flowers and I can watch Nilo dance that day. I can't wait either. Then be sure not to miss out. I hope you can ever join us and enjoy Nilo's dance and try the best sweets. Thanks, Kamari. Guys sleep too. Props engineer. Is there no future for me? Manager of the Dubayer Theater. Here for an interview? Oh, it's a playwright manager. Roche. Everybody keeps talking about Swoosh, the dog. Cannot be as good as Nilo. Fareed. Oh, that. Oh God, that reminds me of uh, Black Ops 2. Poor Fareed. Ouch. Though well, he might he might have made it in a different outcome, but not the one that I played. <laughs> like my house if you want it. Oh my God. Oh shoot. You gave me an artifact. What's our artifact? Oh, look at her. In Tanka? Tanka? Alright, where's the Timmy of uh, Sumeru? The, a the Academia. It. Whoa. Welcome to the Academia. Academia consists of six Darshans, each of the permanent seat in the Academia. Permanent. More information, the Amritra. Press one for more information on the. <laughs> Uh, ooh, I don't know how to pronounce that one. Press two. Information on Banta, Bantamad. Press three. If it's a human service officer, press zero. Hang up, press pound. This party, Sarah's. 
The Adventurer's Guild told me to expect you to. It's nice to meet you, Asfan. We'd like to Asfan. ask you about something. Oh, the one I know is an E in the front, I think. I see. So, Catherine's the one who sent you this way. Ha! <laughs> it's true that the Aramites' network is vast, but even I can't help you meet the Dendro Archon. Why? Wait, seriously? That's it? That's it. Pack it up. Go back to Inazuma. <laughs> Afraid so. The Aramites aren't terribly religious, so we don't know much about divinities. As far as the Akasha goes, we can access even less than you. We originally came from the desert. The gods there died off long ago. Since those gods days, there? we've used our own two hands to carve out a living. They were multiple? We don't beg gods for their aid. There were multiple gods in the desert. So maybe it wasn't just Ruka Divider then. Maybe the Scarlet King is one and there's another one. It isn't just us, though. If you ask me, I think most in Sumeru aren't interested in lesser lord kusanali dang oh why is that just take the academia for example they're the ones who truly rule sumeru although they believe in gods most of them only care for the late greater lord rugadavada in their eyes she was the one who founded sumeru and gifted us with the akasha Lesser Lord Kusanali just happened to inherit her legacy. So therefore you should respect her and her legacy, but I guess not. Because of the Academia's influence, most citizens are more familiar with Greater Lord Rukadavada and hold her in greater esteem. Not to mention that Lesser Lord Kusanali never makes an appearance and the Academia never announces anything about her. As far as the people of Sumeru are concerned, she's just a god that exists. And that's all. So it appears that Kusanelli didn't really do much in terms of gaining the people's respect. See, I thought Kusanelli was like, you know, helping everything and, you know, hanging out with people, but nope, she's just kind of solidified in her spot, just not moving. But who knows? We're all just guessing when it comes down to it. Besides, I'm sure the God of Wisdom doesn't worry about her reputation among people like us. All right. Well, thanks for the info, Osfond. <laughs> no problem. Always happy to help out the Adventurer's Guild. Wow. right about most people's attitudes here. Not only are they not interested in the Dendro Archon, they even say stuff like, if the Akasha doesn't think I should know, then I don't need to know about it. True. We've been asking for information non-stop ever since we got to Sumeru. But the harder we try, the more helpless everything seems. Isn't there at least one person in this entire city who cares about Lesser Lord Kusanali? Surely. Oh, uh, you two are interested in Lesser Lord Kusanali? Who, who are you? Huh? Who are you? From the sound of it, you two are outlanders who recently arrived here. You've been asking around for information on Lesser Lord Kusanali, right? Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot to introduce myself. I'm Dunyar Zod. One of Lesser Lord Kusanali's faithful followers. Dunyar Zod? Dunyar Zod. Okay. My wife. Oh, uh, the reason on top after you do the quest, the statue's having a. Oh, I see. Dunyar Zod. Whoa, really? Then do you know how we can meet with her? I'm afraid I can't help you with that. But your conversation earlier did happen to remind me of a legend about the Dendro Archon. Sort of legend? Can you tell us legend? Sure. It goes like this. Long, long ago, there was a man who heard a prophecy. 
It predicted that a great calamity was about to befall him. Panicked by what he heard, the man sought out the Dendro Archon in the hopes that she would bless him with the wisdom to help him escape his predicament. The man journeyed across deserts and the rainforests and experienced tribulations of every kind. However, he still couldn't find any trace of the Dendro Archon. In despair, he thought, alas, the Archon has abandoned me. <laughs> he then had no choice but to sorrowfully resign to his fate. Oh, shoot. Okay, and then what happened? And then the calamity came. But to his own surprise, the man felt somehow emboldened by the trials of his journey. By relying on his own strength, he managed to overcome the adversity. How? At that moment, a bird perched upon his shoulder. This bird was, in fact, an avatar of the Dendro Archon. She said, Oh, Archon Seeker, do you now understand? She and her wisdom have long been found by you. Mm. Along your journey, we were in every flower and blade of grass, every ray of sparkling sun, and every breath of dancing wind. So long as you continue to think and ponder, we'll be wherever you go. You were every flower, blade of grass, every ray of sparkling sun, every breath, and every dancing wind. So literally everything around him was the Archon. What an amazing story. Yeah, thanks for the story. Paimon feels all warm and fuzzy inside after that. Uh, how does that help us? It doesn't. <laughs> uh, in a way, it seems like this story is also one of the Dendro Archon's avatars. Dunyarzad, since you worship Lesser Lord Kusanali, can you tell us anything else about her? Of course. So, did you two know that, uh... Uh, I'm, I'm terribly sorry, but it seems something's come up now. Uh, let's chat another day. What? Huh? Hey, wait! Uh, what the heck just happened? Anything sus? I don't see anything crazy. I see air mites. That has something to do with the people over there. It looks like they're searching for someone. Hmm. Dunyarzad was acting super nervous just now. You think they're looking for her? Yep. <sighs> this stinks! We finally managed to find a lead about Lesser Lord Kusanali. We can't let them get in the way now. Now here's gonna be all the problems that cycle through that we're not gonna be able to make progress. <laughs> You've seen a brown haired girl wearing a purple top and a long blue dress? We're looking for Dang. her. Dang. Rip. Uh, did she have bandages wrapped around her wrists? Yes, that's her. Did you see which direction she went? Yeah, she went to Celestia. Uh, yeah, she went that way. Come on, did you just rat her out or was that the opposite way? Quick, after her. Oh, okay. Gotcha. I couldn't tell. I was like, uh, did she just rat her out? All right, before I continue, there's a, I want to talk to the guy. Oh, I guess we can't do it yet. Oh, okay. Main quest first. Okay. Swallow. Dusk birds. That's what I usually use to carry messages. They're essential for my job as a swallow messenger. They cut down and on the need for me to run errands and spend a lot of time in town. I think you should maybe pick a different uh, title there. Oh, we got <laughs> you, Dad. We got the goat. <laughs> Unless I play all day tomorrow. Then Yara's odd. Oh, it's you two. Oh, you startled me there. You can relax now. We threw those people looking for you off the trail. Uh, really? Oh, thank you so much. Unfortunately, I believe there's still more of them out there looking for me. Uh oh. Looks like there are some coming this way. Huh? More of them? Then what are we standing here for? Run! 
No, wait, <laughs> I... Uh, my body isn't in the best shape. Uh, it's difficult for me to run. How about we find some place to hide? I don't know why they're trying to... Trying to get her. Okay, sounds good. There's a tavern on the other side of the port we can go to. They probably wouldn't expect me to hide in a place like that. All right, let's move out. Stay behind us. We'll keep an eye out for anyone looking for you. Stealth section? Oh, no. Is there a tavern? On the way, though. I've been here already, game. Don't worry about it. <laughs> They shouldn't be able to find us now. Oh Wait, shoot! Stand down, Dia. Oh my gosh! No, continue doing what you're about to do. That actually was kind of frightening. My lady, who are these two? <laughs> my gosh! I did not expect to see her so soon. Dang! Yeah, but even I thought she was gonna be like a desert character. Who's here already? It looks amazing. They're travelers that I met on the street just a moment ago. They happened to notice that you were all searching for me, so they helped me hide. Just about to freaking kill us. <laughs> it's about to literally rip our head off. I see. In that case, you two should scram. There's nothing here for you. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Come on now. Come on now. You gotta get along, man. Kind of sounds like a. Uh, let me see. Wait a sec. Who the heck are you? And why are you shooing us away? Don't start nothing, Paimon. I'm Miss Dunyarzad's bodyguard, here to see that she returns home safe and sound. <sighs> My lady, let's get going. You've been gone for so long that your parents are worrying themselves sick. Then Yarzad is a very important figure. Then if if Dea is your bodyguard, like holy crap. And if I refuse to go with you? It'd be easier for the both of us if you cooperated. But if you insist on not going, then I'll have to carry you like a sack of potatoes. Oof. Is that like a thing on her head? No, I think it is. Is it? Those actual ears. Hey! Junior Zod already said she doesn't want to go back. Why are you still pushing her? Don't start stuff, Pylon. Stay out of this. You don't understand the situation. Sorry, my lady. Even though I'm your bodyguard, your parents are my employers. I have to answer to them. Oh, okay. So she's also she's her, her bodyguard, but then her parents are also her employers. So that's why the significance comes in. How much? Wait, what? How much more do I have to pay you to become your employer? <laughs> so you never listen to my parents ever again. Double? A triple? Give me some time, and I'll get that much. My lady, this isn't about Mora. Hey, who does she sound like, man? I can't think. I don't know what you think of us Aramites, but let me say this. I like Mora, but I'll never go against my principles. Mmm. Look at those claws. That's why I'm here looking for you. Sure, it's an order from my employer, but... My conscience was also telling me it's the right thing to do. And knowing your health, carelessly running around like this is going to hurt you. For the sake of those who love you, don't be stubborn. Yeah. Should I shut the briber? Shut the briber off? No, you're wrong. I'm aware of my limits and I know what I'm doing. Honestly, the only people being stubborn right now are my parents. We got to we got to meet your parents. Understand what's going on here. I, I need more context. And I know perfectly well that it makes no difference if I'm at home or not. I still won't accept reality. And every time I bring this up, they just change the subject. Dia, you've been living with us a long time yeah. already. This should be old news to you. <sighs> Dia, I know it hasn't been easy for mother and father, and I'm grateful for everything they've done for me. But there's someone else in this world I'm also grateful to. And that is... Because she saved me. 
The love I have for her is the same I have for my parents. Okay. We, we, we don't, I don't know anything yet. I gotta keep going. This is my life and my last chance. So I want to do something meaningful. Somebody saved her. My lady, are you sure what you're doing now is meaningful? Maybe Kusanali saved her? Yes, I'm sure. At least, it is to me. <sighs> Fine, I won't ask you to return home anymore. There you go. But let me make something very clear. I'm only doing this because I respect your determination, not because I agree with you. The hard bargain there, Dia. Thank you, Dia. <sighs> Sorry for being so rude just now. My nerves were acting up, and I even brought up your payment in such an offensive way. <laughs> uh, don't worry about it, my lady. I did say that I like Mora. Besides, that's our next topic of conversation. I thought this would be the other way around. Like, she's be calling her her lady, but I guess... Dia's not much of a, a lady. She's more of, like, the bravado type. Today's little excursion caused such a ruckus that every single bodyguard at the estate was deployed. It wouldn't be easy to hide things from your old man. Uh, Dia looks... she looks too good. Since this definitely won't be your last escapade, here's a little tip. You should at least make it look like your room and things are still in order when you leave. Also, you'll need someone to cover you for when you're out and about. So, I'll let you hire me, my lady. This way, everyone wins. As for the pay, <laughs> let's say half of what your father pays me. We can settle the bill when we return to the estate. Uh, I need more context on this situation. Okay, deal. have calmed down <sighs> my lady stop trying to look tough we're already in a tavern so let's rest up and grab some grub i'm grab sorry some for grub. You if you don't mind i'd like for you to join us sure after you rest up we want to hear more about lesser lord kusanali you almost got freaking wrecked by day right there it means just smiling away your theory is if it isn't Dia, haven't seen you in nearly half a year. Half a year? Word on the street is that you're a bodyguard for the Homayani family now. <laughs> Don't you find that kind of work boring? The Homayani family. Homayani family. Nah, you get used to it. How about a menu over here? You got it. She's so huh? chill. Isn't this little Miss Homayani herself? We don't get to serve personages like you very often. We'll be sure to prepare our very best. Let's go, Lambad. Thank you, sir, but there's no need. I don't have a lot of Mora on me, and I really ought to save as much as I can. Uh, but please bring these two the best food you have. They're my new friends, so I want to be a good host for them. Respectable. No need to break the bank. We'll eat whatever you order. Don't worry about it. We'll pay for our own food. Yeah, I'll be for a mile. You know, I'm you know, I'm good. You know, I'm I'm good for that. Wait, we're paying for ourselves now? Oh, well, <laughs> I kind of wanted to try something fancy, but we aren't exactly loaded. Guess Pine almost settled for something ordinary. How about our coconut charcoal cakes? They're our signature snack, <laughs> and they run cheap. Look, other customers over there are eating some now. It sounds like a dessert. That looks like food. Oh, maybe this is the cake. Okay. Uh, they look kind of burnt and dry. <laughs> uh, pie mine will pass. Picky pie mine. Oh, that's the first thing. What you got slimes before? Huh. What do you have against my slime dishes? Can you shadow in? Uh, you yes, We asked a lot of people when we first arrived. And almost nobody was interested in Lesser Lord Kusanali. So, what made you want to follow her? Well, remember when you asked me if I knew how to meet the Dendro Archon? Even though I don't know how, I think I've actually seen her before. She saved her. Huh? Just really? the one. Maybe. Yes, it was when I was a child. At the time, my illness had kept me bedridden for the better part of a year. 
I was stuck inside and couldn't make any friends, and my parents did their best to find treatments for me. But even then, the Akasha didn't have any helpful information. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. The Akasha does not seem good at all. Like, I'm thinking you have all the wisdom in the world. It doesn't seem like it's helpful at all. I'll be honest. My younger self no longer had any hopes or dreams. One flare up was so bad that I was in a semi conscious state for several days. Dang. Like the Akasha system in, in like a beta mode or something. Then one night, I woke up alone in my room. I was terrified. My body was paralyzed. Even if I cried, there was no sound. What? At that moment, an ethereal voice spoke in my mind. Dunyarzad, don't be scared. You don't have to cry. Oh, Dunyarzad, shit. don't be scared. You don't have to cry. This is cool. <laughs> Who are you? How do you know my name? Um, how do I explain this? You might not be able to understand, but actually, I know everything about you. Really? Oh. Of course. I know that you're scared of thunder, that you hate taking medicine every morning, and that you love counting the petals on your mom's skirt. Wow, you really do know everything. Junior is odd. Is there anything you want? What? Not really. I can't go anywhere or do anything. This is a really cool little, like, storytelling method. Huh? But aren't you a child? All children have wishes. Tell me what you want, and maybe I can make it happen. There's Nagatoro talking right there. Voice actor, Kimberly. Can, can you make my illness go away? Oh, I'm sorry, but I'm not powerful enough to do that right now. Rip. Hard rip right there. Then, can you be my friend? No response. After that, the voice said, okay, I'll be your friend. Huh. Although my body was suffering during those days, that voice encouraged me and told me many wondrous things. Beyond my window was the flourishing Sumeru city. Beyond the city was a lush rainforest. And beyond that was the wall of Samiel, deserts, and all of Tevat. Once I finally made it through that bout of illness, I couldn't hear that voice anymore. I told my mother about it, but she said that I must have been dreaming. Nope. But I know that that voice wasn't a figment of my imagination. Before that, I had never heard of Tevat. It was listening to Kusanali. Yes, for sure. If it weren't for that voice, I would have never grown curious about the outside world. Nor would I have learned how to read and enjoy so many books. That voice sparked a desire for wisdom. It had to have been the Dendro Archon. <laughs> Dia just popped so much, man. Oh my gosh. I've been hoping for a chance to repay her kindness. In fact, I was running around today to help prepare the Subzerus festival for her. Wait. Oh. Okay. What's the Subzerus festival? That's what the guy back in Monsat was talking about like ages ago. It's Lesser Lord Kusanelli's birthday, which was the day that she was found by the sages. Not in detail though, it's just kind of talking about all the festivals that each region has. It's actually an old holiday that originally celebrated Greater Lord Rupadabata's birthday. When she passed away, the holiday eventually became a celebration of the Lesser Lord's birthday. I heard everyone was overjoyed when they welcomed her back to Sumeru. In those days, the festival was a huge deal. And now... But because of the academia's influence, people have gradually lost interest in the festival. Come on, sit down. The Academia actively participates in Sumeru's many holidays dedicated to Greater Lord Rukadabata. But when it comes to the Subzerus Festival, forget any funding. They practically act like it doesn't exist. Wow. Dang. Maybe they see Lesser Lord Kusanali's birth as confirmation of Greater Lord Rukadabata's death. <laughs> so they're reluctant That's... to celebrate it. By the trailer as well. 
that's awful. It is. It's absolutely terrible. Sure, the Greater Lord founded Sumeru, but hasn't Lesser Lord Kusanali been the one quietly protecting us for the past few hundred years? Just that nobody realizes it, though. <clears throat> Just remember that we're still out in public. Don't get too carried away now. Then it's just like, move her hair out the way. <laughs> I know that people over by the Grand Bazaar still hold the Sub Zero's festival to this day, but I hadn't met any of them before, so I was never able to contribute. But recently, I made a friend there who also follows Lesser Lord Kusanali. I gave her my savings because I want her to throw a wonderful festival this year. You gave her your savings? That's the least I could do for Lesser Lord Kusanali. Holy. Hold on, my lady. Does this friend happen to be Nilu, the one who sends flowers to the estate? Oh, it's Nilu? I thought it was Nilo. Nilo. Nilu. Nilu. Okay. Yes, that's her. Mm, I saw her leaving the other day with a nervous look on her face. It seemed like she was hiding something in her arms. Did you give her something? Money. Uh, yes. Uh, initially, I didn't have much more prepared. So I had Nilu sell one of my skirts. I've agreed with Nilu to meet up at the Grand Bazaar today and see how things are coming along. Dia, would you accompany me? Dude, I'm loving these characters. Sure, that's quite the trip though. I'll carry you. I'll carry you? No, that would be too much, even for you. You might as well just accept the lift. If I let you walk, who knows how long it'll take us. And if anything happens to you, then I'd really never hear the end of it from your father. How strong are you? Can we also come along? But of course. And Nilu will be thrilled to hear there are more people interested in Lesser Lord Kusanali. So sick, man. I am loving this so far. Inari and Kali prologue and now all of a sudden we see Dia. I really did not expect to see Dia so early. We see Dia way before we even get like far at all. I was thinking like, you know, we'd see her in the next patch, like the desert area, but nope, here she is. What's the Grand Bazaar? Oh, that's right. Yeah. Oh, Lots shoot. Great food and great drinks and I'm sorry I'm late, Nilu. There's Nilu. There's Nilu. Oh, doing your Zod. It was taking you so long that I assumed you got trapped at home, but you made it in the end. Her voice sounds good, but it does sound very like nonchalant. She looks like she's like full of emotion, but her voice is just kind of like, eh. Uh-oh. But if Dia's here, that means you got caught, right? You could say that, uh, but everything worked out. She's on our side now. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, not completely. Oh, and who are these two? Oh, meet the Traveler and Paimon, my two newest friends. They're visitors who just arrived at Sumera City and are looking for information on Lesser Lord Kusanali. So your followers from another land? Yep. Truthfully, no. Wait. Oh, uh... Followers? I don't know about that one. Oh, really? Well, that's okay. You're still invited to the sub Festival. By the way, Dunyarzad, we've already started decorating the Grand Bazaar. It looks spectacular. Thanks to your generous contribution. You're very welcome. It's the only thing I could do. Do you still have enough Mora? <laughs> uh, probably? Probably. Don't sweat it. We've already finished renovating the stage. Come on, I'll show you. Yeah, I do feel like Nilu should have a, you know, more excitement in her voice. Her appearance seems very, like, you know, full of life. I mean, her voice isn't, like, you know, like a down in the dumps, but it's just very relaxed compared to her facial expressions. Uh, so let's go to Nilo, see the stage. Wow, this place is amazing! Not bad. 
The last time I was here, the stairs were full of holes. Dang, was that bad? The stairs were nothing. A little while ago, we discovered that the tree above the stage had a huge chunk of bark ready to fall off. Mr. Zubair was worried sick. We reported it to the Academia many times, but they never sent anyone to deal with it. We didn't want anything bad happening, so we were going to cancel all the stage performances. Rip. Why didn't anyone come to handle it? Oh, probably because it was the theater asking. The Academia looks down on performers like us. They probably think it would be best if the theater closed down completely. Wow. Academia is not friendly, seems like. We can't let that happen, though. Not only would everyone involved in the theater go hungry, but then we wouldn't be able to hold the Subzerus Festival anymore. Go hungry? Jesus. Thank the Dendra Archon for doing your Zod. But the more she gave us, we hired someone to patch up the tree, and we also gave the stage a much-needed makeover. That sounds real rough, and, uh... Everybody who's not the Academia. The stage is going to be even prettier when it's festival time. I can't wait for you to see it. But the people are fans of uh, Nilu, so. And I can't wait to see you on the stage. You've been practicing so long already. It's almost time for your dream to become reality. <laughs> it's our dream. I'll do my best for the two of us. Nilu, what are you going to be doing at the festival? She'll be dancing the dance of Subzerus. Wait, what? The most important performance at the Subzerus Festival. Why did Pokemon ask that? She's the main event. Junior Zod, have you told them the origin of this holiday? I only told them about the Greater Lord and Lesser Lord so far. Okay, then I'll tell you two about how this holiday came to be. Oh, here we go. According to legend, the Sabzerus Festival was originally the Goddess of Flowers' birthday celebration for the Greater Lord. Okay. Goddess of Flowers. A long, long time ago, on one of Greater Lord Ruka Devata's birthdays, her friends threw her a celebratory banquet. Some of the gods got drunk. <laughs> one started playing ah. music, and the Greater Lord started singing. So the Goddess of Flowers began to dance. See, when I think of gods, I think of, like, spiritual beings, not so much, like, actual people. So it's, it's weird to, to hear that. But I guess there's always been tea, so. As she danced upon the grass, countless beautiful Padisaras began to bloom wherever she stepped. Those brilliant purple flowers became her dazzling stage. All the gods clamored, Oh, if only time could stop at this very moment. Was like they had a great time. Sounds somewhat bittersweet. Of course they did. When people mention the gods, they always think of the Archon War. But Sumeru's gods also had happy times. Although they aren't around anymore, they're preserved in our tradition of dance. This outfit I'm wearing is apparently based on how the goddess of flowers looked. I'll see. There you go. The outfit's based off of just tiny people compared to the divine we still have to do our best to make sure that the birthday girl feels loved on her special day yeah it really just kind of sucks to be kusanali because she's just seen as like the you know the fodder really well flowers you mean oh <laughs> oh Nilu, you of all people will definitely be able to convey our well wishes to the dendro archon I also noticed that you went the extra mile and scattered Padisaras around the stage. Padisaras. <laughs> they symbolize the goddess of flowers, after all. It's just a shame that all the real Padisaras went extinct after her death. Wait, so you tell me I've been picking up fake Padisaras? Yeah. The Greater Lord brought forth Padisaras in memory of the goddess of flowers. But she ultimately could never truly replicate that beautiful purple. Mm. Thinking about the goddess of flowers dance makes me wish I could have seen it. If my stage were anything like that, uh, I'd be thrilled if I had just two real body saras on the stage. <sighs> so, traveler in Paimon, what do you think? 
Interested in the Sabzeru's festival? Will you two be coming? Sure. All of Lesser Lord Kusanali's followers will be there for her birthday. It'll be a good opportunity for you to learn more about her. Make it seem like a uh, social media thing. All her followers. Ooh, Paimon thinks that's a great idea. Maybe we can actually talk to. Well, it's for her, but it's not gonna be there though. You sure it's not because you went in on the phone? You sure it's not because you want to watch Nilo dance? Hey, come on! There's nothing wrong with enjoying a festival. Besides, it's Lesser Lord Kusanelli's birthday. She'll be happy to have more people who are celebrating it. I hope so. <laughs> so how about we all attend the Subzeros festival together? Sounds like a plan. Okay, Let me show you which stage decorations we've picked out so far. Traveler and Paimon, if that doesn't sound interesting to you, then feel free to explore the area. Everyone at the Grand Bazaar loves Lesser Lord Kusanali, and we're all looking forward to the Sub-Series Festival. Oh, maybe she, Grand Bazaar hasn't liked this little area. In that case, we'll take a look around. Yes, they certainly do not like her as a whole, that's for sure. That's for sure. We talked to Kamari already, but she might have a different dialogue now. What's oh. with your yellow hair? And why do your clothes look so funny? Are you an outlander? Wow, thanks. Did you know that the Sabzeros festival is about to happen? There'll be loads of fun things to do at the festival. But the best part is when Ferris, the Knight of Flowers, passes out candy to everyone. Ferris? Arf. A natural born singer. Nice. Ah, dancing at the Subzeru's festival. You know, I also danced when I was younger. They need more like uh older looking like elderly looking NPCs, because they're just kinda all the same. As a child, I even asked my grandmother why we performed the dance for the Lesser Lord when it was originally done to honor the Greater Lord. Oop. My grandmother said that Greater Lord Rukadavata is a beloved deity and honored by all. And Lesser Lord Kusanali is too. If mm -hmm. the goddess of flowers ever knew lesser Lord Kusanali, then she would certainly have wished to be her friend and hold celebrations for her, too. Okay, I was hoping she was going with, like, a positive direction there. The Subzeru's festival has been losing its appeal over the years. Hmm. That is, until a wealthy benefactor stepped in this year and brought the festival back to life. I heard she forked out a lot of mora to make it all happen. Yep, her entire savings. Sure, those folks at the academia might not like it, but what's a festival without song and dance? It's true. What is a festival without song and dance? Huh. Revamping the stage for the festival couldn't have been easy, that's for sure. I bet this year's festival will be one to remember. I don't know much about the Grand Bazaar, but I do know that the residents here have a penchant for song and dance. <laughs> Two things that the academia doesn't particularly approve of. Certainly not. And the perfume sold around here is a lot better than what you'll find elsewhere. The fragrances are longer lasting and they're gentler on your skin and... Uh, I mean, <clears throat> that's uh, what I've heard <laughs> at least. Kind of reminds me of, uh, I can't think of the voice still. Yeah, I don't know. Shoot, I was hoping for Dea to come out, but it's gonna be a while before she comes out, probably. Love her design. It's just, it's so cool how characters, like, are going to come out and you see them in the story. That's, like, still just so cool. I think Dia's gonna be the, uh, the Yai Miko of Sumeru. Which means she won't be here for <laughs> to like 2.5 or 3.5 or 4 or whatever. Oh, he was the one to on the uh, billboard. Also, Nilo as well. So I I think he should be 3.1 the the very next patch. I don't know if he'll be early or late, but. 
Even better? Yeah. Nilu, your outfit looks amazing. There's also something different about you from when we first met up. <laughs> I thought I'd add a little extra pizzazz to my dress for the festival. See? No, I don't. What'd you do? Wow. Did you sew all that yourself? Uh-huh. Sewing is a fundamental skill for hmm. everyone in the theater company because we make all our own costumes. Did you know that Mr. Zubair not only can make costumes, but props too? <laughs> I've noticed that you can't keep your eyes off that crown over there. Would you like to try it on? <laughs> May I? The crown? Of course. The legends say that the goddess of flowers had beautiful horns on her head. So this crown was made to reflect that. Oh. Oh, Dunyazad, you look absolutely stunning with it on. It's like I'm looking at the goddess of flowers herself. And I, oh, wait, did she put it on? Or is it just like dialogue? Whoa. Like Catherine. She's not behind the desk? What the heck? Real susky. <laughs> Catherine Banner win? Huh. Come to think of it, Paimon's only ever seen her behind the counter at the Adventurers Guild. There's the keyhole. This is the first time we've ever seen her taking a break. She has legs. <laughs> hey, Catherine. Hello, Catherine. Huh? Oh, hey, it's the traveler and Paimon. Oh, what's shaken? What's shaken? Whoa, break time, Catherine. Sure sounds a lot less formal than usual. Paimon was still waiting for her to say Ad Astra Abyssosk. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Standing behind the counter at the Adventurer's Guild doesn't require any complicated functions. I'm confused. Are you not a robot? But saying and doing the same old things over and over again can get pretty monotonous. Like watching the same Fontaine movie day after day. Fontaine movie? Reboot her and reset? <laughs> Take you two for example. You travel across to Vat to enrich your lives and gain new experiences. Well, we enjoy traveling across to Vat and all that, but we're mainly looking for clues about her brother. Yes, you should keep searching. Sometimes the answers we're looking for are we got three more years to go. at our intended destination. Or four. Instead, they're found along the way. Huh. Haven't we heard someone say something? Something pretty similar recently? Uh, anyways, what brings you out here, Catherine? This is the very, very first time we see Catherine not behind the desk. Actually kind of cra crazy. Maybe Kane. Are you also a fan of Sub Sub uh, Sub Sub Zero's festival? There you go. No, not particularly. I guess you could say that I'm loving the recent atmosphere here. Thanks. If festivals bring happiness to everyone, then that's where their true value lies. Oh, it looks like it's about time for me to be heading back now. Would you have a five minute break? All right, we'll see you next time at the Adventures Guild. Oh, by the way, thanks for connecting us with the Aramites. We've already made some great friends in Sumeru City thanks to you. This is a pretty big deal. I'm sure you two will get along well with the people here. You've already been blessed by the element of Dendro, after all. <laughs> See you around. Well, that was awful strange. Hmm. You don't ever see There's that. something really different about Catherine today. Hey, Traveler. Paimon. Hey. What's the big idea? I've got something to tell you. My lady knows you're looking for ways to meet Lesser Lord Kusanali, and she's been trying to come up with a way to help you. Well, I have an idea that might help. Are you serious? We'd love that! Kind of random. It might not necessarily pan out, so don't get your hopes up too much. I'll need to take you two somewhere and ask someone some questions. 
What about then, Yarza? Uh, my lady is feeling a little worn out at the moment. Nilu's found a place for her to rest. After I take my lady home, let's meet in front of the Citadel of Regzar. My lady. Well, sounds like a plan. Hmm. Let's head over to the Citadel of Regzar and wait for Mia. Get your spices here. I wonder if we're about to, about to. Well, yeah, we are. About to watch the festival. About to watch it all go wrong. There's a book? Wait. What is the book? Oh, I don't think I got to the library yet. I think it's above, yeah. Alright. Sorry, I'm late. It took some convincing for the master and mistress to believe that Miss Dunyarzad was only sitting in the port for a while because she was in a bad mood. Anyway, I guess I should be thanking you. I haven't seen Miss Dunyarzad that happy in a long time. If it wasn't for you two, she probably would have been caught and dragged back much earlier. Dragged back to where? You sure sound a whole lot nicer than when we first met, Dia. Who would have thought you had such a soft spot for Dunyarzad? It's called being a professional. I'm a bodyguard, and I work for whoever's paying. Hmm, think so. <laughs> Look, Dia's blushing. Yep, that's the blush I've ever seen one. Uh, listen, you two. I don't expect to be working for Miss Dunyarzad very long, but I hope to finish things on a positive note if possible. Let's cut the chit chat and head into the Citadel. We'll see if the person I know has a way for you two to meet with the Lesser Lord. Well, then, I guess that's going to end real quick. Not long at all. Walking back into the reputation spot. They've added, like, some interesting shots now in the campaign. Oh, er, hey, Chief. Not campaign, but story. The Chief. Dia, what are you doing here? And well, well, didn't expect to see you three together. <laughs> I take it you all know each other already? Mm -hmm. We met this morning after the Adventurers Guild pointed us to Osfond for more info. Osfond. No kidding. Hmm. So, where's Ruksha? I thought I'd help these two out by asking about the theft. Anything you can tell him? He's right behind you. Rukshaw's gone over to the Academia. Oh, the Grand on. Sage recently ordered Sumeru City to begin bolstering its defenses. So people from all over have been called back to the city. <clears throat> Since you've already mentioned the theft, I suppose I might as well tell him what we know. Oh. Appreciate it, Chief. Uh, theft? Sorry, what the heck are you guys talking about? Oh my god, Palma's on fire. Just recently, the Academia lost something. And there's a chance the item is connected with the Dendro Archon. This case might just somehow help you in meeting her. Hmm. <laughs> I suppose that's one way to look at it. But if you ask me, the case is more about the academia than anything else. Let me fill you in. The Academia recently sent a convoy to pick up an important package from Aru village. Word got out, and the convoy was robbed on its way back. Always on the convoy. It always gets robbed on the convoy. The Grand Sage took the whole matter very seriously. Not only did he dispatch the Matra, but also enlisted our help in the search for leads. All we know so far is that whatever was stolen is currently in Port Ormos. Oh, gosh. I have to go all the way to Port Ormos. So we're probably going to meet El Haytham. And then that'll be a whole other adventure. <laughs> we're just getting further and further away from meeting. <laughs> you two have heard of Port Ormos, haven't you? It's the largest commercial port in all of Sumeru. You can travel there by leaving Sumeru City and heading south along the river. The Academia's grip isn't long enough to reach all the way to Port Ormos, so the city's a little more laid back, meaning the population's also a mixed bag. You never know who you'll meet there. Oh, I wonder who. Apparently what was lost has a great deal to do with the Akasha, knowledge, 
And even the gods. I'm afraid I don't have any other details for you, though. If you're interested, maybe you could head to Port Ormos and ask around yourselves. If you want my advice, try introducing yourselves as students of the Academia once you're there. What should we do that, or...? Are you serious, Chief? All the Academia students are in Sumeru City, you know. Why should they pretend to be students in Port Ormos? <laughs> if you're also interested, just go there and see what happens. Count me out. I've got plenty of work to do no. here for the Homiyani family. And take it from me. If you two really do decide to visit Port Ormos, you best watch your backs. Let's just say that the Aramites there aren't nearly as friendly as those here in Sumeru City. Yeah, I was gonna say, I thought Aramites were, like, bad, and she's, like, the leader of... Well, she's, like... She's a, she's a mercenary as well, so I was confused. There are even some extremists who go around shouting slogans like, Retake Sumeru for the Scarlet King. Word is that more and more are joining their movement. They're becoming a real headache for Chief and the others. Meet the Scarlet King. You bet they are. The Scarlet King's been dead for thousands of years. Now they start oh. spreading rumors of his return. Ridiculous. I mean, they did. That was in the trailer. They wanted him to come back. So I must say the Scarlet King, Ruka Devada, or somebody else. Not everyone's like you, Chief. Even the desert natives who abandon their homes in the wilderness still wish to have a god of their own. <sighs> Well, Traveler, that's about all the information we have for you. I wonder if her arm got injured, or if she just has like a thing around her arm. Thanks, Mia. And you too, Osman. Well, she lost her arm or something. Since we've gathered all we could for the moment in Sumeru City, let's head to Port Ormos and see what we can find next. Miss Dunyarzad is looking forward to seeing you both at the Subzerus Festival, so be sure to get yourselves back here in time for that. Oh, shoot. Okay. Good. Then we'll see you both at the Subzerus Festival. See you later. Oh, nice. Alright, on to Port Ormus. Oh, god, yeah, the music is good. Wow. Mimela? My Rishi. Actually, born in a desert. Ooh. Definitely a good soundtrack. Ooh, we got the sugar dew bait. Oh, we'll definitely need this, I think, right? Shaded clarity? This. Is that like super tiny? I think it is. Oh, you need to tend fish. The fishing rod, that's kind of cool. Oh, <laughs> there it is. End of the line. Oh, it's ER, nice. Trick is full order effect of using elemental skill, dealing 80. Or after using elemental skill, dealing 80% attack as AoE upon hitting a point of attack. Hmm, it's like, it's kind of like, uh, um, the Ishin sword that, that Kazuha got, but besides ER, this we got, ooh, we're playing the drum, <laughs> J-Vant, know-it-all, nice. Sham. Mama. You not talk to people? I guess we're quest locked right now. We got Uwu or Owu. Just <laughs> stop dancing. Oh. Wait. What's he, what's, he, what's he asking? Well, let me go up to the beginning. 
I can see my lesson for you. Oh, shoot. I'll do it myself. Hmm. Thanks for the artifacts. Ooh, bro. Goldsmith. Oh, okay. Come and have a good look yourself. Traditional spices of the highest quality, made with pride and experience. I was just trying to talk to her, and that's why I can I guess I can talk to her. Before. <laughs> You've got a deal. I can't thank you enough for always looking after my business. Believe me, I'm not making this up. Several Eremite mercenary groups are nearly in open conflict, but does the core of 30 care? Nope. <sighs> and that's not all. Did you know that? Wow! Talk about hurly burly! This place is busy! Uh, guess that's only to be expected for the largest port in Sumeru. Uh, maybe it's because of what Thea told us earlier, but. Baiman can't seem to shake the feeling that there's also danger lurking in these crowds. Feels like it. Ooh. Let's get our bearings so we can start looking for leads. We know that whatever the Academia lost is related to the gods. But other than that, we don't have much else to go on. Probably like Mario, the Mario games. Like Super Mario Bros. Wii. When you're at the forest area. Hmm. Asma told us to try posing as academia students while asking around. I might check the Akasha on the way here, and the academia doesn't seem to have any research facilities in Port Ormos. So. Oh. Figure out that before doing anything else. Bring that out could be crucial for the rest of our investigation here. Well, True. Given all the people that come through here every day, if there's any information to be found, Paima bets we could find it in the market. Let's ask around and see what we come up with. What? Something more enjoyable than making matching Julie for new leaves. Oh, I guess I, cause I talked to him before the cutscene started. That looked really weird. Hello there, my friend. Hello there. Welcome. Welcome. Uh, how can I help you too? Yeah, we're looking for a stolen piece from the academia. <laughs> Oh, who are they in the background? <laughs> of course, especially around this time of year. Students from Sumero City that are about to graduate often come to Port almost to cut loose a little. Many people often talk about how hard it is to get accepted into the academia, let alone graduate. But those who finish their studies and go on to become full-time researchers at the academia have it even harder. Sure, we may not be Sumero City, but Port Ormos offers beautiful scenery and a stress-free environment. Some even say it's good luck to come to Port Ormos. It's not stress-free. Some researchers come flocking here when things get to be too much at the academia. Ah, you see over there? Those are students from the academia. Oh, that's what they are. Okay. I was wondering. I was very curious. They look pretty serious. Maybe even a little worried. They've been looking worried and miserable ever since they got here a few days ago. If you ask me, the life of a merchant is better. So long as the Akasha teaches us what we need, then life is good. Hmm. Those students seem to be discussing something. Let's see if we can listen in. It's no good. I've tried. 
tried asking around, but I haven't been able to learn anything useful. Not to mention that a bunch of scary-looking Aramite mercenaries have been posted along the streets now. There's been a lot of fighting between the different Aramite factions in Port Ormos. If we choose to move on our own, then it would be wise to steer clear of them. Especially the group that's constantly shouting some stuff about the Scarlet King and some resurrection. I've even heard that the Citadel of Rexar is starting to get fed up with them. What was that group called again? Ein something or other? Okay, I love the music, but I might have to turn it down a little bit. It's like I can't hear the dialogue. <laughs> I mean, I can, but I, it's like the, you know, high pitch of the music sometimes is like over their dialogue. Scarlet King and some resurrection I heard. Fidel Resigar is starting to get fed up with them. So what was that group called again? Ain something? I don't think I've heard of Ain, no. Uh, louder? Yeah. The music is it's great, but sometimes it starts like right at the wrong moment. Alright, that's fine. They're called Ain El Akmar. Today, I heard that the thing we're after might be in their possession at the moment. Ain Al Akmar or Amar. Wait, come again? Don't you see? Many of the Aramites in Port Ormos deal with trading this kind of thing. Yeah, that's what I was waiting to hear, Udari. It's waiting to hear about like the trade association when it comes to like each uh, uh what's it called pier or harbor rather. They're usually pretty wary of outsiders, but not so with students of the academia. It's because the kind of goods that students are looking for aren't the kind of goods that Aramites are after. As long as they know you're a student, then deals can be made. I've heard that Ein al Hakmar likes to set up shop at the Jafar Tavern. Supposedly, so if you're willing to part with half a million Mora, they'll give you info on anything. Half a million Mora? No thanks. Wait, wait, did you say half a million? If information alone costs that much, then how could we ever afford to buy what we're looking for? I guess we might as well give up on trying to graduate this way. I kind of thought that the currency in Sumeru was knowledge itself. But I guess maybe you could... This is different, I guess. I wouldn't worry too much. Our field of research is very niche. Who else could possibly be after that kind of shady knowledge? I bet it's practically worthless <laughs> to anyone aside from us. Shady knowledge? Oh, I guess that makes sense. And the only thing left for us now is to find a way in. Why don't we all just pool our money together and pay for the information? Yeah, sure. Wow. Did you hear that? A niche field of research and shady knowledge? It all sounds pretty suspicious to Paimon. Is knowledge something people just buy and sell like that? Very suspicious indeed. Whatever was stolen from the academia was also related to knowledge. Wasn't everybody? So Go to Jafar's tavern. Try talking. Try talking to one of the Aramites. Hmm. Maybe not the Aramites. Let's just go to the tavern. Didn't you hear what they just said? Buying information is going to cost us half a million mora. Have you lost your mind? Oh, I got that. Don't worry about it. No, I don't have that. Buy information is worth the price. Don't let them. Yeah. Let them off, won't let them off easy if it turns out to be a scam. <sighs> All right. Paima never thought she'd agree to parting with that kind of mora. But if you know what you're doing, then we should give it a shot. Maybe I should have put the second option. Although I feel like no matter what you would have picked. Can I talk to these guys? Half a million? That's a lot of mora. Do you really think that Ein El Akmar group can give us reliable info about what we're after? Uh, we should discuss things thoroughly before we make any moves. So this might be another like debate thing where you have to give them more, but you can, you know, you can wager. I love the new NPC models though. Esmil. Oh, you've arrived. Please take a seat. Tell oh, right, he's dropping. So, they think that they can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the boss? Ha! <laughs> Once we reclaim the power of the Scarlet King, they'll be the first that the boss punishes. <laughs> They're nothing to be afraid of. 
Our main rival now is the Caracal Battalion. They've also amassed a significant amount of more at this time, so we mustn't underestimate them. How can the Caracal Battalion compete with the boss when they're nothing but a bunch of money-grubbing opportunists out for a quick mora? Yeah, with boss's fervent devotion, he'll be able to use this power to bring our god back this time. Huh. This time? All these guys talk about is the Scarlet King, so they're probably the ones we're looking for. How on earth are you going to bring back the Scarlet King? <laughs> Greater Lord Ruka Devata. That traitor and her followers must not be spared. The day will come when the Scarlet King exacts vengeance on Sumeru, and all of them shall be punished. What? I'm still trying to wrap my head around this. Really, Ruka Devata, a traitor? What are they talking about? I thought everybody was on board with Ruka Devata, and now... God, there's such division here. No one likes Kusanali. The Academia loves Ruka Devada. And these guys love the, the god of the desert. Um, Scarlet King. Yeah, Paimon was wondering what they meant too. We should ask about that if we get the chance later. All the other regions were just like, just one. You know, it was like Vent or, uh, Barbados, and then it's, you know, Rex Lapis. Uh, you know, Inaz or Inazuma still had, you know, Makoto before, but it was still Raiden Shogun. That was like the main, you know, what everybody liked. But this is just, this is all messed up so far. <laughs> this is all messed up. This information from the Eremites. Huh? Who are you? What do you want? Uh, I'm a student from Academia. A student? <laughs> What's a student from Sumeru City doing in Port Ormos? Uh, you know, just looking for some info about a certain someone. Ah, um, well, if it's info you want, you've come to the right place. The question is, can you afford it? Oh, no. <laughs> End of 500,000 Mora? Oh, I can't do that. Huh? What is this, some kind of joke? <laughs> oh, <laughs> sorry. She must have grabbed the wrong amount. <laughs> hey, what do you think you're doing? Oh no! Don't tell me it's actually that much. Here, this is the merchant's address. Whatever you're looking for, you'll find it there. Hmm? Well, what are you waiting for? More question. I hope that's actually my Mora, man. God dang, that's like a talent upgrade. Oh, that's right. We heard you mention the Scarlet King just now. We're actually interested to know more because... Uh... Because... We're... Uh... Archaeology students. students. <laughs> Fine. Since you've already handed over the Mora, I guess I can throw in a little extra info. As you can see, members of Ain al Ahmar are devout believers of the Scarlet King. Devout believers? Years ago, the Scarlet King founded the great desert nation that was our homeland. It was an advanced civilization, far beyond anything you'll see in present day Sumeru. But each region had a god. The Scarlet King was the rightful god of wisdom, but he was betrayed by a companion he trusted. She even stripped him of his title, God of Wisdom. So Ruka Devata was the one that did it? So, you mean the traitor was... Greater Lord Ruka Devata, yes. That shameless wretch destroyed the Scarlet King's civilization, and our ancestors were forced to flee to this land where we were made to suffer the tyranny of our enemies. All right, so that makes a lot more sense now. I don't know if he's telling the truth or not, but... Apparently Ruka Devata took over the Scarlet King. Kind of messed up whatever he had going on. So now the Eremites of the desert, or, or the Eremites in general, are kind of pissed off. Furthermore, she conspired with the Academia to cover up the truth of her actions and create the merciful and benevolent facade for which she is now known. Ugh, just thinking about it sickens me. So he got killed off, and then Ruka Nevada died later. But the story doesn't end there. Oh, no. The Scarlet King isn't truly dead. Oh, the shoot. voice of the Oracle has been heard in the desert, prophesying his resurrection. 
Well, if he isn't truly dead, how is it a resurrection? He should come back, right? Mark my words, our God shall return. And when that day comes, all followers of the traitor and all the desert dwellers who have forgotten their true God will suffer retribution together. I wonder if that'll be the boss, but like the weekly boss now. <laughs> Scarlet King. That'd be sick if it was. If what I'm saying makes you shiver with fear, it might not be too late for you to become a believer of the Scarlet King. <laughs> He's like, this will be terrifying. It'll scare you to death. Pokemon's like. Returning? Tell us more about this Oracle. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I don't have anything to say to you academia people about that. I think this conversation has reached its end. Not just yet. This man is a fraud. Oh, shoot. Huh? Also, it said his name. It should have question marks, right? You again? <laughs> Deranged academia lunatic. Yes, it's me Ooh, again. Oh, Chong Lee. I warned you that if you weren't willing to sit and discuss things with me, I take measures to make things uncomfortable for you. Huh? Listen to me. That address he gave you is fake. Or at least you won't find a merchant waiting for you there. Damn. This group has been boasting all around that they can provide information on a certain item as a means of luring people into their territory. Okay. And me bag my mora, please. You lied to me. Once you show up. They keep up the act until they have hard evidence that you want to purchase said item. Then they use that to squeeze you for all the more of your work. Bring my more back. Hey, shut it all, Haytham. What are you playing at trying to ruin our business like this, hmm? I told you the other day. I wish to discuss my terms with your boss. Who's the boss? Ha! The boss made it perfectly clear that he won't negotiate with you. Yes, and in no uncertain terms. But that was then. It does not preclude him from changing his mind in the future. I'll hate him. I'm warning you, don't push us or this could get ugly. We don't usually get rough with people from the academia because it just complicates things. For a lunatic like you though, we might just have to make an exception. If you're suggesting that we escalate this from a verbal exchange to a physical one, I accept. <laughs> After all, even the Archons used war to negotiate the ownership of Tavats. If, on the other hand, we can't agree on any means of negotiation at all, then I'm afraid my next course of action will sting a little more than the mere falling through of a few business deals. Uh oh. I will jeopardize the Aramite's reputation, which I know you value above all else. I like his voice. I'm quite confident that if I began to take such action, your boss would willingly approach me himself. However, I fear that by then, some things will have happened that cannot be undone. He sounds like a a very, very serious Kaya. The vibe I get. Also, a word of advice. I suggest you tell your boss exactly what happened here today. Otherwise, he might blame you for not telling him in the future. What did you say? You heard him. Consider this. Have I ever failed to follow through on my word in the past? This guy is really out of his mind. He's the opposite. Okay, then. If you really have a death wish, let's meet a week from today. The pier in front of the Faros Lighthouse, four o'clock in the afternoon, sharp. Don't expect us to hold back. Ooh, we got a fight on our hands, boys. I want to see that. Not so fast. First, you return the 500,000 more to them. Thank you. Wow, was it the debit card? He just send it back, cash out? Nice. Please, I beg you, don't provoke them. We can't afford any trouble with this crowd. They haven't even paid for their food yet. Ah, Mr. Iman. There appears to be fewer staff in the restaurant recently. This wouldn't happen to be because they're all busy spreading the word to the students, would it? Yes. I, uh... Someone who chooses to do business with a group like that really can't afford to get so flustered the instant someone confronts them about it. Consider the meal compensation for our silence. I'd say you're getting an excellent deal. Whoa, did you see that? He not only got us our mora back, but sent the Amorites running too! 
Yeah, I don't play around. Plus, he seems to know a lot about what's going on around here. Let's catch up with him and ask some questions. Let's interrogate him. Get him. After him. Literally. Please, just leave. Forget the cost of the meal. Just, uh, pretend nothing happened today. You're behind it too, huh? Monster. You monster. That was a cool scene. Cool Al Haytham uh, introduction. Want to uh, thank you for your help back there? No need for thanks. My goal was to get to them, and you two gave me just the opportunity I needed. We're even. Did you have the, the big thing on both ears? Oh, I advise you to keep your distance from them. Since they weren't able to make off with your mora in the end, they might harass you again in the future. Well, we know now. <sighs> All right. Goodbye. Um, a student from the academia. A student. <laughs> right. Look, you should know that those thugs conducting business with you had nothing to do with your lie. Perhaps we can also talk terms. I know a thing or two about sword play. Ooh. Oh, are we gonna fight instead? She doesn't even have a vision. Forget it. I am a vision. Maybe not, but she can still use elemental energy. Otherwise, there's no way we'd go asking for info from I'm Al I Alan Poe. Um from guys like that. Those high-headed thugs are definitely gonna bring a lot of backup for your next meeting. Even if you don't go alone, you won't regret taking us with you. True, we should think about it. Hmm. Alright, I accept. Got hey. a paper. If you're searching for someone who sells that kind of merchandise, I'll give you one of their addresses and you can try your luck. We'll reconvene at the appointed time by the pier. It doesn't matter if you show up or not. Um, so hey, what? since you were happy to give us this merchant's information, does that mean you can tell us exactly what we're after? You were willing to part with 500,000 mora for something and you didn't even know what it was? <laughs> nope. <laughs> okay. Well, if you truly are as skilled as you claim, then you can beat the answer out of them when they become hostile. Look, if you've been making inquiries, then you have to know something by now. Tell me what you know so far, so I don't waste time repeating information. Black screen. We know it's connected oh, to the academia somehow, and that not all do the Aramites deal in it, but some students want to get a hold of it too. Hmm, what else? Is there some kind of not, or it seems like some kind of knowledge? You know almost everything there is to know, but you're unable to compile this information because you've never seen the object before. This is what you've been looking for. Whoa. Is that the shoe? I forget what it's called. This is a knowledge, the knowledge capsule. capsule, yeah. To put it simply, it's a vessel that can store a fixed quantity of canned knowledge. It's like a miniature Akasha. The divine knowledge capsule. Anyone who links it to their personal Akasha terminal instantly becomes privy to its contents. Anyone? Correct. Anyone. Unlike the Akasha, which heavily regulates who can access what information, Knowledge capsules can further contents without any requisites. Ooh. That's amazing. It's essentially a convenient and harmless vestibule for knowledge. Unfortunately, it's illegal in Sumeru to privately possess or trade them. 
Wow. They were created as a means for scholars to transfer knowledge gained from Ermansoul into the Akasha and are intended to be destroyed immediately after use. Isn't that a waste? But despite strict regulations, some of these knowledge capsules will always escape destruction. After all, there will always be those in this world who are dissatisfied with life as designed for them by the Akasha and wish to change their fate. Change your fate. Over the past century, a wide variety of canned knowledge has been leaked from the academia. Now, in Port Ormos, the valuable ones are a means to Mora for the Aramites. Mm, nah, we don't want that. Meanwhile, those which the Aramites deem to be useless to them occasionally prove useful to the common citizens and hapless academia students. Well, I think that about sums it up. Oh, Haytham has a muscle compared to Edo. <laughs> I heard that the academia lost something recently. Is it left in Alice Capsule? So is that, yeah, I wonder, is that it? Oh, so that's your true objective. I want to learn more about it. With our current arrangement, I don't believe I can offer an answer. Oh, what do I have to do? <sighs> You're still resolved. Fine. Let's talk somewhere with fewer people. Let's go. It'll help him to a more secluded spot. Let's continue our conversation here. If you wish to learn more about the knowledge capsule that the academia lost, then you must help me with something. What is that right there? What is it? I need you to find someone named Dory, a traveling merchant. Oh shoot, well we're gonna meet literally everybody in the trailer in like the first act. Unlike the peddlers who hawk inferior knowledge capsules, she often has quality goods in stock. Some say that as long as there is profit to be made, there is nothing she won't dare to sell. Wait, I want the peddlers who hawk inferior cat knowledge capsules, you know? Oh, okay. So does she have one herself? She's guarded against people from the academia because most of her wares don't comply with academia regulations. I think she blacklisted me. I met with her informant, but it soon became clear that they had no intention of letting me get any further. Oh, no. Become one of Dory's customers and earn her trust. This is my condition for further collaboration. So Dory's like selling illegal stuff. <laughs> Why do you want us to meet with her? Until you complete this task, you don't have question privileges. Wow, dang. Uh, fine. So how do we go about doing this? You two are outlanders who haven't been here for long, so Dory should view you as safe clients. I'll give you the informant's address and their contact password. Beyond the password though, I have no way of knowing what other tricks she might have up her sleeve. You'll have to improvise. No problem. Uh, this is kind of nerve-wracking. The true challenge begins after you meet her. She has a keen nose for Mora and a shrewd eye for wares, and she no. only likes customers who she deems to have good taste. I'll prepare some funds for you. Buy hey. nice quality wares and earn her approval. Next Hartagula. Which ones are good and which ones are bad? Uh, is that something we can learn quickly? Hmm, that's true. Have you two heard of Elemental Sight? Nope, never heard of it. Oh, well, that's a surprise. I guess I'll have to hold you in higher regard. Anyway, that ability should resolve your issue. Hmm. All right, where are the funds? Here are two knowledge capsules. Tell me. Can you detect any difference in their quality? Nope, uh, not yet. Um, they look the same to Paimon. Try inspecting them with elemental sight. Oh, the glowing oh, one. Go. Did you see anything? They both glow green, the one on the left shines brighter. Rumor has it that higher quality knowledge capsules generally appear brighter when viewed through elemental sight. 
So it's the one that's not going so good, just not as good, or is it just not good at all? That's because knowledge originates from Ermensoul, the root of Dendro power itself. The more powerful the knowledge, the richer it is in Dendro energy. God, I can't wait for all hate to come out, man. It's gonna be so long. <laughs> However, some can knowledge with a high concentration of elemental energy is of little use in contemporary times, so those capsules are of little value. Using elemental sight is merely a stopgap measure, but it should suffice for earning Dory's trust. That sounds pretty impressive. Here's a sheet with the informant's location and contact password, and here is the Mora for purchasing canned knowledge. Location and contact password. Don't be cheap. You'll need to spend to catch Dory's eye. If there's any Mora left over, just keep it. Thanks, man. Thanks, Elhatham. Oh, and be sure to exercise some caution. There have been Matra present in Port Ormos lately. Your efforts will be for naught if they catch you. Yikes. Matra? I know. They belong to the Academia's regulatory body. They also handle cases of illegal canned knowledge transactions. Like I said, the Academia has banned both their trade and possession. I love the idea of like them using knowledge as currency. So it's like canned knowledge, like canned goods, like a can full of knowledge in it. The Matra are razor sharp. You're in razor. for nothing good if they lock their sights onto you. If you two want to back out, now's the time. Yeah, I give up. I'll just go back to, I'll go, I'll go to Fontaine. It's fine. Won't take that risk. Okay, then we have a deal. If you succeed in your dealings with Dory, Come find me at the Wikela Funduk. We'll have an open discussion then. What now? The Wikela Funduk? Oh, and Dory's well. Look at what Alhatham wrote. Dory's informant is a traitor near Old Ormos. Old Ormos? How much did you give me? A bag of Morgan by Alhatham? If we can't get knowledge. You can feel the heavy weight of that bag. Oh, uh, he mentioned. I want to see what the note said. Uh, I might have missed it. The tash, the fish. Hello. What are you two looking to buy? Okay, so we want to follow. He said, "Oh shoot, unripe." Yeah. <laughs> What a unique palette. We have unripe horror fruits, but we usually keep them in the back. I'll have someone escort you. Following the paper got us past the first round. Oh, uh, see? I'm glad I read the paper. Ronak, these two want to buy unripe Ronak. horror fruits. Show them to the warehouse. Got it. You too. Please follow me. If I didn't read, I would have been screwed there. I would have put the first option for sure. You two have a fascinating fashion sense. We haven't seen a customer wearing a Sumeru rose for quite some time. Uh, Every hold on. Let me think. Sumeru rose means common merch. Um, no. Wait. Not for, uh, we're not for my mistake. I do apologize. Ah, the warehouse is up ahead. Please follow me. All right, let's read that note a little bit more before we move on. So, unripe fruit. Wearing a morning flower, looking to buy canned goods. Similar rose, looking to buy products leaked. What? What location is currently involved in other quests? Oh, uh, really? The Kali event is blocking the story? Alright. Oh. When taking on the story, we'll go check out the event, I guess. Before I retrieve your products, I need to confirm a few things. 
Wow, he has Please no trust. Me, we may not have sufficient stock for you today. Earlier, many of our Hara fruits were taken by mice. Dang. Sorry to hear that. Congratulations to you. What? Uh, hold on. That's not right. Taken by mice means they sold out. Oh. Ah, uh, I'm Wait, what? sorry. But as things currently stand, we won't be able to fulfill your order. Why don't you two think things over? He's cautious of us. Let's take a closer look at the paper that Al Haytham gave us. Did that not? I thought yeah, I knew. I have no idea. Answer. But eating hara fruit that makes your head and ears ring sounds like a bad life decision. Sure does. Would you like your hara fruits to be packaged in the Sumeru City or Port Ormo style? Yeah, I guess we want in bulk, so we do Port Ormo style. Wow, you two sure are generous customers. We'll be sure to package your products beautifully. Okay. Everything has been confirmed. Miss Dory is waiting for you up at... Shoot! It's the Matra! Run! What? The Matra? Where? Oh, Haven said we're done for if they catch us. We gotta get out of here. Dang, he's gone. We don't know this area, so let's follow that apartment. Go, 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 go. That is, uh, terrifying. It's the second time somebody just ran off like that. Get him. Wait, what? Okay. Oh. Excuse me, lads. Huh? Oh, that voice came from behind the building on the right. Here, over here. You can stop running now. Oh, she is. Oh, she has it on the back of her hat. Nice. <laughs> so little. So you were the one who was calling out to us just now. But, uh, are we definitely going to be safe here? This is Dory. We don't know it yet. These two good customers wish to buy some horror fruit, Miss Dory. And if there's nothing else, I'll just excuse myself. She also has, like, the cool-looking eyes, too. I didn't catch that in the trailer. Oh, very good. Thank you. Should have known the distinct-looking figure. I'm unsure that you'd look a whole lot scarier. <laughs> hey, what are you trying to say, Princess Pea Brain? I can be scary enough when I need Pea to be. Brain. Oh. In me. If you don't watch what you say, then you can forget about doing any business. Don't ruin it for us, Paimon. But it seems you two have actually done pretty well so far. Not only did you manage to find the informant, your reactions were also pretty sharp. You don't really look like criminals or anything. But I bet my Mora that you've been involved in some shady dealings, haven't you? Is this a Dory theme plan? It's more poor almost. Uh, I'm not sure if that's supposed to be a compliment, but we'll take it. Oh, it's just been getting roasted ever since we got the same room. It's true, but she keeps coming back at the back at them first. I can't risk doing business with people who start hopping and puffing after just a few paces. No matter how much more they might have. Not only will they get caught by the Matra, but they'll also get us into trouble. As decent folks trying to run an honest business. We don't need any of that. Wouldn't you agree? I'd agree. So that's why I prefer to have customers like you. It's your first time here, but don't worry. I won't ask too many questions. Even if you wish to buy enough knowledge capsules to decorate your house with, please knock yourself out. How did you know that I wanted those? As long as you have lots of round shiny. Oh, I guess we're putting the request for it. Then we're all good. To be fair. Can you show us your products? Ah, uh, yes. Of course, of course. Go ahead. Help yourselves. Voila. Hmm. Wow. She has wow, a what the heck? Of canned knowledge. Whew. She'd probably be in serious trouble if the Matra caught her with all this. Smuggler. What kind of products do you seek, my dear customers? Uh, don't worry, I'm not interested in your reasons for buying. I can, however, offer some suggestions. 
That lion's also from the trailer again. Uh, let me use my elemental Take sight. This one, for example, an analysis of the sociological ideology and dialectics of the Hillicharles. Only three people in all of Tevat have ever studied it, making it extremely rare. It's on sale now for 350,000 mora. That's on sale? The analysis of the psychological ideology and... Yes. Who would want to be an expert in that topic? Uh, Elon Musk. Or how about the architectural styles and construction methods of Tibet in the early Argon War period? Ooh, I kind of I want that one. With this one, you can become an expert in historic architecture preservation and find an excellent, well-paying job in nearly any nation. Ooh, now this sounds like it could be useful. Two million mora, and it's oh. yours. <laughs> no discounts. I was waiting to see what the price is gonna be. Two million. course you are free to pick whatever your hearts desire the contents and price of each knowledge capsule are indicated in small text on the body of each one down at the bottom all right let's try the method that i'll hate them mentioned shoot all right so there's at least three wait no that was the oh I'll take this one. And this. Oh, okay, we're taking all three? Oh, no. That's going to be about 7.5 million more right there. Ah, you've really got a good head on your shoulders and quite the eye for quality. We can choose a variety of canned knowledge. I'll take these, please and thank you. My, oh my, you are blessed with a taste for both the exquisite and the extravagant. Customers <laughs> like you are a rare breed. One in a hundred. No, one in a thousand even. I like Dory. Listen, I have a special offer for you two. If you spend just 100,000 more and more, you oh, can more? have any knowledge okay. capsule of your choice up to a value of one million more. Nah, I'm good. Say what now? Hey, did you hear that? Spend another hundred K and we get a capsule worth a whole million. <laughs> Calm down, Paimon. Don't let her check you out spending more and more. But all the canned knowledge we just bought is easily worth half a million more. If That's we it? spend just a little more, we can get something worth one million more. Isn't that a fantastic deal? I mean, I guess, but do we need more knowledge? Think about it. We've gone to all this trouble to get this canned knowledge. And so far, everything <laughs> we've bought belongs to all Haytham. It's just like, any buyers? Any takers? Aren't you even the least bit curious about how this whole canned knowledge thing works? We're talking instant knowledge here. Don't you want to try it yourself? Instant knowledge. Instant ramen knowledge. Like you're the one who's curious? You just need a shot at your... You just need to let me try it and see. Come on, come on. We still have around a hundred thousand of our hands. And it's not even our left. money. So let's put it to good use by finding something useful for you. Ahem, you got a deal, Dory. We'd like to spend an extra one hundred thousand more. No. Excellent. And then please select from this fine collection of canned knowledge over here. No way this deal actually works out. Uh, hold on a second. Time I thought we could choose whatever we wanted. Why can't we choose the ones from over there? Oh, but my dear customer, the knowledge capsules over here are worth one million more each. I'm sure discerning customers like yourselves will be able to find something to your liking. Please take your time. Uh oh, Paimon has a bad feeling about this. Let's use Elemental Sight again to check these. Maybe we just pass this time? Uh, well, no, let's have a look, yeah. Does she mean like pass as just like give up or? Oh, shoot, none of them are good. So, what did you see? 
Yeah. So Yikes. they're all worth about the same amount? <laughs> Face palm. Well, anyway, the more has already been spent, so let's at least try to find something useful. Can we tell from just looking at it? Time and take a look here. An introduction oh. to traditional Sumeru brewing techniques, the art of growing spices, an overview of ancient runes. Oh, how about this one? Sword fighting techniques eight. Eh, yeah. Not sure we'd ever find volumes one through seven, but at least this knowledge should be useful. Right? Oh God. Let's go with this one. Fine by me, I guess. Dory, we'll take this one. All right, very good. I'm expecting some new goods in the next couple days, so be sure to check back again soon. No, uh, I'm tapped. Never mind. Or anything else you need. Bring your Mora to Dory, and doors will open. I'm good. As you and Dory went smoothly enough, let's head to a color. In Nod's labeled sword fighting techniques, eight. It will be brought from Dory's booth at 100,000 Mora. You have no idea what the first seven are, but combat techniques are always useful. Well, probably. <laughs> Mora, Mora, shiny Mora. <laughs> oh, uh, please come back huh. anytime you need something. All you care about is Mora, huh? Here. Why would you pick this place as our meetup spot? Well, Wakela Funduk is under the Academia's control, so naturally the Academia has people working here. I came to Port Ormos under the pretense of conducting official business. Look at his abs. You're a pretty daring guy. Relax. No one here is interested in anything we say, and the Macher won't come here. <sighs> okay now. Tell me how your encounter with Dory went. Went well. Bring my hands on up to date and give him the can knowledge you purchased. Okay, we did what you asked. So, can you tell us about the knowledge capsule that the Academia lost now? Before that, I have to ask. Why are you two so intent on tracking it down? You don't have to answer, of course. Can I figure anything? Are we going to meet the Ninja Archon? Yeah. yeah. She just wants to meet the God of Wisdom and ask her about something important. We've been in Sumeru for a while now, but we still haven't found a way. When we heard that the Academia had lost something that might be related to the gods, we came here in case it turned out to be our lucky break. In that case, you're on the right track. Hey, here we go. A short while ago, the Academia lost a knowledge capsule in the desert. It's supposedly a divine knowledge capsule. Use oh, and you'll gain the wisdom of the gods. So they lost a divine knowledge capsule. How the heck did you lose that? Oh, it got stolen. Wow, there's really such a thing as that? Hey, if we find it, do you think we could learn how to meet the Dendro Archon? Ooh, or even how to find your brother? That was also in the trailer as well. Uh, we'll definitely won't find our brother, but we'll find our Archon. I highly doubt it has any mystical properties, but it does indeed exist. And it's right here, in Port Ormos. What? So, where exactly? That's what we need to find out next. You're going to find it too? I won't deny that. I am investigating because I'm curious as to what the Divine Knowledge Capsule truly is. Gonna just mess you up. That's pretty much it. As you know, the Eremites in Port Ormos also have their eyes on it. It is an extremely precious item. The knowledge contained within may bring great power or wealth to whoever has it in their possession. Seems like it's gonna go horribly wrong now. Based off the trailer. Several brigades have been vying for ownership of it as of late, but there is still no victor. My personal finances and connections cannot compete with those of the Aramites. After attempting various methods, I finally managed to reach a tentative agreement with several brigades. Hmm. I agreed to forego ownership of the Divine Knowledge Capsule in exchange for the opportunity to study it. After all, there's no harm in understanding what it is. However, 
There are those who are less amenable to negotiation, such as those from Ain al Ahmar. Ahmar. They adamantly believe that the divine knowledge capsule contains the Scarlet King's power, and that he will return to this world when they obtain it. They refuse to let anyone from the academia tarnish their deity's soul. I doubt that'll happen. So you kept hounding them because they refused to cooperate with you? I don't think this color can will come back. Yes. Ainul Ahmar isn't exactly wealthy, but its members are determined to get that capsule by any means necessary. To that end, they've resorted to many methods more foul than fair in order to amass sufficient funds. So, I've been sabotaging their business to force them into negotiating with me. Wow. Nice. The Divine Knowledge Capsule should be up for a secret auction within the next few days. Each brigade will place their own bid, and the prize will be covertly given to the winner. Also, yeah, I love how they, they do the trailer, because they just like take little bits and pieces of dialogue and put it into the trailer to make it sound hype. So they, they put his first sentence in this piece of dialogue, and then they said, go find Dory afterwards. So it was like very, very clever how they did that. So we gotta go to an auction. To ensure the capsule's security and to evade the mantra's notice, the winning brigade will not publicly disclose their victory. Unless I know whose hands the divine knowledge capsule ends up in, my agreements with them will fall through. So what's gonna happen is I guess one of the Aramites are gonna win somehow and they'll get their hands on it. Dory is the most reliable source of information, but that avenue was previously close to me. With you on board now, the situation is different. In other words, you wanted us to befriend Dory so you could find out where the Divine Knowledge Capsule is. Yes. Yes, you can say that. <laughs> but this arrangement harms none of us. The day after tomorrow, Go back to Dory and try to purchase information on the Divine Knowledge Capsule's whereabouts. If she has no information, wait two days and approach her again. Hmm. Day after tomorrow, and then if not, then wait two more days? If I get the opportunity to study the Divine Knowledge Capsule, I will relay my findings to you. Will that suffice as compensation? Yes. Okay. Then we'll meet up in two days. Oh, we actually bought a knowledge capsule for ourselves, but we're not sure how to use it. I'll be like, what? Use my money? <laughs> you two want to try using a knowledge capsule? Sure, I can teach you. Doing so right under the academia's nose is a bit problematic, though. What do you say we head to the outskirts of town? Okay, all right, all right. We will actually learn some new stuff. works. Show me the capsule you purchased. Here. Hmm. Sword fighting techniques eight. <laughs> a combat class knowledge capsule. This class is something of a rare find these days, since most have been taken by the Aramites to augment their battle capabilities. <laughs> oh, because I can't fight on their own. Really? Ah, oh, yeah. What a great buy. What's gonna be like? That was until now. If you want to determine the efficacy of this capsule, I can evaluate efficacy. your combat ability. However, effects will likely be minimal if you already possess a high amount of strength. Hmm. We can conduct a controlled experiment where you fight two battles, one before using this knowledge capsule and one after. You're gonna fight you? While you fight, we can use an Akasha terminal to monitor your various physical parameters. There may be variances in your physical strength between the two tests, as well as a disparity in your opponent's abilities. But don't worry. I'll run statistical analyses afterward to mitigate any confounding effects. Wow! Oh, hey, Thum! You must have been one of those guys at the academia who got top grades on everything! Um, Paimon's curious about something, though. You definitely weren't one of those students who needed canned knowledge to graduate from the academia, right? So, why are you risking getting caught by the mantra for this capsule? Good question. When you are unable to understand the researcher's actions, most cases can be attributed to curiosity. This 
is but one theory. Hmm, sounds like you're trying to avoid the question. All right, let's begin the test. Just fight as you normally do. Shoot, are we actually... Oh, we're fighting him. That'd have been cool. Oh, he lifts his chin and looks into the distance and then waiting for you to prove data battle. Oh, wow. <laughs> it just looks up. Useless. Reinforcements. I'll link your Akasha terminal to record data. The next step is to use this knowledge capsule. You get a buff? Hold it in your hand. I'll help you establish a connection with it so you can activate its power. Imagine Traveler Axe gets a buff through this thing. Oh, shoot. Wait, we can actually use it. If I saw countless sword building figures fighting one moment and then the next day they disappeared into the recesses of my memory. There you go. Hey, how are you feeling? Felt well, something for a moment. Whatever that inside the yeah. Whatever's inside the capsule or the nuns capsule became a harder memory. You oh. mean that it so is that gonna come into play later on, I guess? All right. Time for round two. Fight with the same composure as before. Oh, I guess right now. House of the Tan Time. Hey, get down from there. Really are just too far away. Oh, to El Haven. Another picture with him. <laughs> oh, the difference. Now. I'll start recording data again. Oh, hey, Thumb. How's it going? You failed. Well, the knowledge capsule you purchased did improve her combat capability. During the second fight, her overall fighting performance increased by 0.073%. <laughs> wow. Wait, how much? Nothing. Basically zero, yeah. I mean, to be fair, it is. It's just that we are strong already, so it wasn't much of a change for us. Of course. This could be because she is so powerful that the capsule's contents were unable to produce a substantial increase. Yeah, if somebody didn't know how to fight used it, that'd be a 75% difference. At the very least, this test allowed me to gain more insight into you two. Our deal seems increasingly worth my investment. I'm heading back to Raquela Funduk. I await your response in two days' time. This is more of for when you ask Dory for information. Pay You're her freaking as much loaded. As she requests. You are loaded, sir. He's the next Tartagula. <laughs> That's a funny picture. Like, who are you? Who are you? I've been here longer than you. Here, over here. Oh, welcome back, my loyal patrons. What can I do for you this time? You name it. Can knowledge, supplies, or anything else you need. I'll find a way to get it. Where there's a waterfall of Mora, there's a way. Nope. Can you really get us anything we want? Anything at all? Aha. Uh -huh. So it appears the can knowledge alone is no longer sufficient for your opulent appetite. <sighs> then please oblige me. Tell me what you have in mind. 
What's the buy info on the whereabouts of the Divine Isles capsule? The buy info. Oh! <laughs> I knew customers with pockets as deep as yours would undoubtedly crave something more profound than ordinary can knowledge. That is the currency. But you know, that kind of information isn't going to be cheap. After all, I had to work really hard to weasel my way into the auction site. And not to mention that if anyone found out that I was the leaker, I would be in big, big trouble. But how can we be sure your information is accurate? I'm curious. How you just happen to have this kind of info the moment we need it? The music. Yeah, I, I was gonna say, I don't think Dory actually knows about this stuff. <laughs> But maybe she does, I don't know. <laughs> because to me, anything of value is what I consider to be my supply. Therefore, I must always be aware of what's hot on the market in order to secure more sales. As for the information's authenticity, well, you've no need to worry about that. I used a camera to take a picture of the transaction. That way, no one can dispute it. Hmm. Name your price. I'll buy the information. It's always a pleasure doing business with such sterling patrons. Just stars in her eyes. <clears throat> now that you've paid in full, here's the scoop. The Divine Knowledge Capsule was purchased yesterday by a certain misery, the leader of Ain El Ahmar. I knew it. I knew somebody's gonna get their hands on it before we did. Just the trailer. I knew, yeah. Well, that's not good. Ain El Ahmar? You mean the Aramites who worship the Scarlet King? Ah, so you're already familiar with them. Rip. The group has done everything in their power to obtain the Divine Knowledge Capsule. After all, they believe it contains the power of the Scarlet King. You should have thought about what you just did before you... Well, I guess she doesn't care about that. She just wants some more. That Divine Knowledge Capsule is unlike any other canned knowledge I've seen before. It was glowing bright red. Yeah. yeah. The capsule is clearly visible in the picture I took. You can look for yourself. Thanks for the info, Dory. Did we exchange the more? Please, it's my pleasure. It's all thanks to discerning customers such as yourselves that my efforts yesterday were not in vain. Please, don't hesitate to contact me if you ever need anything else in the future. More up for Dory, <coughs> open stores. Every time. Well, we figured out where the Divine Knowledge Capsule is. Turns out, it ended up in the hands of Ein El Ahmar. Let's head back and talk to Al Haytham. He's not, he's not gonna be happy when we tell him this news. Would I make him a fan of Dory? Yeah, me too, honestly. Not good info. Really? All right. Let's hear it. In the hands of Ain Al Almar. Dory even gave us evidence to verify the intel. Have a look. Huh, look at that. Clear as day. It must have taken some guts just to infiltrate the scene of the Aramites transaction. But then to get close enough to take a picture like this. Bold move, Dory. Very <laughs> bold move. All right. The person in this picture is indeed Misery, the leader of Ina Misery. Ahmar. And the glowing red capsule he's holding appears to be the Divine Knowledge capsule. In which case, if we play our cards right, when we confront them next week, we should be able to force them to show their hand. Next week? At first, Paimon didn't get why you were provoking these Ein El Ahmar guys. But now, it sort of makes sense. Everything's playing right into your hands. Oh, I didn't even catch that before. After we defeat them, we can finally have a serious talk with their boss and get them to lend us the divine knowledge capsule. Thank you for your time and efforts. Take a few days off while I make some preparations. Let's meet up again on the afternoon of the arranged date, three o'clock sharp. We'll be there. See you then. Is there another day I'm meeting? Let's head to the pier in front of Faro's lighthouse. Yep, let's go. 
so right here we should be fighting fighting the Eremites. I'll hate them. I knew you were crazy, but I didn't know you were crazy enough to actually show up. It was I who demanded that these negotiations take place. I was more worried that you might go back on your promise. <laughs> but to your credit, it appears that you're sticking to your word. This is turning into quite an occasion. I also brought some backup. I assume you don't mind. Because <laughs> he wouldn't have before. It would have been 1v5. Backup? Aren't you the brat from the restaurant the other day? You've come to support this lunatic because he helped you out? <laughs> Fine. Your funeral. Well, we're sending you guys off to the Wong Chong funeral parlor after this. I'm not going to mince my words. Once we're done with you, you'll be nothing more than fish food. Get him, boys! Gonna fight in the middle of everybody? Why is it all a cutscene? Oh, cutscene fight. Here they come. Uh, good luck, you two. <laughs> Town noises. That's close enough. Into the wind. You should be following orders. As one with wind and cloud. Fighting on the... On the tier or the pier. Not the tier. Ooh, cutscene. Academia scum. <laughs> Boss, finally. Oh, it's cutscene. Use it. Great. Now we can. The trailer. Uh -huh. He's a zombie. Boss. He used it that fast. <laughs> He's morbing. Boss! Oh. What's wrong? <laughs> what happened to him? Oh, it's red. We have to cut his Akasha connection. Now. Shoot! <laughs> he punched his ear? Yeah, he did. Sorry for the volume if that was really loud. Do not impede our work. Is that understood, all Haytham? Of course. I was only trying to help. Take him away. <laughs> oh, that was so smooth. That was so smooth. This cutscene actually looks really good, too. World. Forget me. me. Yep. That's Ruka Devada's speech. There it is again. What in Tibet? Well, yeah, I do wonder. I do. I, yeah, I'm, I'm on the same page as Paimon. Like, why? Why did it cause him to be corrupted like that? Like a faulty, a faulty terminal. It looks like he used the divine knowledge capsule. You mean what the was wrong with that? Knowledge capsule did that to him? He just like he just took that right under everybody's nose. Thinking of which, Apache did mention. Oh yeah. Oh. Oh, yeah, she didn't mention that. I think it was that insane, though. I've heard of numerous incidents of researchers in Satyavada life going insane. The state that man is now in suggests that this is a similar situation. Dude, I cannot wait to see what this, like, world forget me. I mean, it seems like she's just saying forget me, world, you know, but. That's what Ruka Devada said, not what the Scarlet King said. This divine knowledge capsule does appear to be linked to the gods, but beyond that, it doesn't seem anything like the rumors suggest. Possessing it doesn't grant you divine wisdom or power. This grants you 
to be bonkers. But in the trailer, they showed like the robot and they went like back and forth between the robot and the human. So maybe we'll see the robot later. Did you hear what he said? World, forget me. What could that possibly mean? Channel your history, Lamine. You know what that means? Is that what I heard from the Ermin soul before? No, he hasn't. Still, Paimon didn't expect the Divine Knowledge Capsule would be so dangerous. Imagine if we tried to open it. Oh, who knows what would have <laughs> happened to us? The evil Lumine. As things stand, there is no reason for me to remain in Port Ormos. I believe our collaboration has also reached its end. I'm confused. Al Haytham took the Divine Knowledge Capsule, right? Or did is that guy like use it so it's it's done? What did, what did he just take? Oh, we were so busy trying to find the divine knowledge capsule that I might forget to ask you something. Since you're a member of the academia, do you have any idea how we could go about meeting Lesser Lord Kusanali? Truthfully, I don't. Oh. Lesser Lord Kusanali appears to exist outside of Sumeru's entire administration. Most of the time, you wouldn't know she exists at all. Moreover, yeah, heard that since part. the Academia possesses the Akasha, a symbol of our deity's wisdom, scholars have no reason to desire to make contact with the deity herself anyway. Uh, everything about Lesser Lord Kusanali is such a mystery! I'm heading back to the Academia. How about you two? Uh, it's almost the day of the sub Zero's festival! Oh Maybe shoot, forgot about that. Too. You have a point. Then we'll part ways here, I'll hate them. Until we meet again. See you in 3.7. Hmm. Now, do I deal with this thing first? Or should I produce the report that the higher ups require? Alright, now I'm gonna sound dumb here, but I'm confused. Is this. He, did he do a good thing here, or is this a behind our back? It's physically behind our back, because we just walked away. But, it's just like a husky type of... I don't know. I thought, I thought once he used it, you used it and it was gone. Alright, that's Act 1. Huh. Yeah, so maybe... Maybe El Haytham is... Not good. But no, it didn't seem like it's not good like that. Like he's not like a bad guy, but just you know, a little shady. Please register new ship arrivals here. I don't know. That's a really good question. That was a really good question. That was the the entirety of Act One. So that was all from the beginning with Tainari and Kali all the way until there. So that was really good. We met a lot of people. Yeah, we don't we don't know his agenda. That's true. I don't think he's bad. We just don't know what he wants to do. So, I guess we'll find out. That was Tainari, Kali we met, we met Dore, we saw Dia, uh, Nilu, we saw, what's her name? I forgot, the one that, the bodyguard of the girl? Yatra, or, I forget. Oh, yeah, Dunyarzad, yeah, Dunyarzad. Dunyarzad, Nilo, or Nilu. Dory, El Haytham. Yeah. We ran into like some of the sages as well. Or not sages, but like the dudes who wanted to take Tainari in. Uh, a lot of NPCs as well that were like pretty important. Talked to the air mites, the boss man. That was good. That was definitely super hype. And now Act 2 begins with going back to the Sub-Zero's Festival. So I can't wait for that one. But I'm definitely taking my time with it. We definitely took a bit to get through uh, the first act. Uh, okay, so after you finish Act 2, then his thing is available. 
Why do you have to wait till you do this part to do that? I guess we'll have that. Let's see. My stuff was so wholesome, uh, was so, well, yeah, was wholesome and heartwarming, especially for the manga readers. True, it was. It really was. It was also, it was also kind of sad, too, because once I got to the point where she had to disclose information about her illness, you know, and how she, like, she drops stuff and she kind of, like, loses control sometimes. That was kind of sad, too. But overall, it was definitely really cool for if you read the manga. It's like he's finally in the game, number one, but also all of the exchange of information we had with her. Is really cool. It's all about telling the story and you know bringing everything together from from one end to the other. You know that was good though. The first act that was yeah, that was literally everything that we just went through. That was all Act One. You were not kidding. Act One was pretty lengthy, but it was good though. When you passed out, your Seeker, God of Wisdom. I'm just, I'm, I'm be honest. I'm surprised that we met so many people so fast. Oh, Hypatia as well. Can't, can't forget about her either. Hypatia. We met like so many people that I would have thought we would meet in the desert, like Dia, but nope, we saw her right away. In its Sumeru city. Oh, Catherine. We saw Catherine as well, but also not at her desk either. So that was really weird. That was the first time we saw Catherine outside of her uh, little, like, desk area. Oh, Lambad, he's the... He made the uh, the whole tavern at Sumeru City as well. Nah, you get used to it. How about a menu over here? You got it, huh? Who, she, who does she say? I gotta find out who voice out there is. We almost got jit for our money. And poor Ormos, but Tenari, or Tenari. Oh, Haytham saved us. We'll, we'll see Kali again, for sure. That was just literally like the the first prologue, and all you know, all the Amber stuff too. Like, come on, she talked about Amber a lot there. But we learned a lot about Tainari as well. What he does as a forest watcher. So I guess the divine Nas capsule is different than the capsule that we bought because we used ours and that's gone now. Yeah, we don't have ours anymore. Oh, I hope I hate him does something of usefulness with his, uh, with that divine knowledge capsule <laughs> and not do something shady. But he did say he might report to the higher up, so I feel like he'd be pretty dumb to use it himself because he saw what it did to that guy. So, oh yeah, so many questions, the little answers, so much to find out next time on Dragon Ball Z.